Bang! Eve's Knives. I'm Jared. Hope all is well. We are live. And we got some incredible, incredible news. Um, I'll wait for a couple more people to get in here. Incredible news. Sorry about that, guys. So, what are we carrying right now? I just seen, uh, I think Talica was the one who just asked that. I was actually carrying because earlier I was testing. So you guys know I had that MK or sorry, that M tech knife, that fixed blade in. Uh, so I took that, me and Kara this morning went out for a hike and we took that with us. Uh, we went to go test it out in the woods with the Buck Mesa. And I brought the Buck Mesa with me and I was kind of just going to like test you know, like the difference between like a Buck USA knife versus the USA designed M Tech knife, but not so much like uh, to advertise the Mesa or anything because I don't think you can get it anymore. I think it's discontinued. But, um, but basically, like 420 HC steel. The other one was supposed to was I, I, I believe it's 440C. It's 440C steel, and it was just like knife against knife, but. I'm, I'm probably put it in the video because I am going to make a video about it and how it went and everything else. We kind of did some abuse tests and some abusive stuff, but some of the stuff was just regular stuff. But I wound up bending the tip on the damn buck mesa. But what I was getting to was I, I carried the roach out there, actually, because I wanted to do a little testing. With this. Since this thing's such a brute, I wanted to do a little testing with this out in the woods. It did actually really good. I'm surprised the edge held up the way it did. Um, but anyways, that's what I was carrying. Now I got uh, I got an ass to kiss, uh, you know, as usual. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what are you guys all carrying? Oh, Ed's got the roach. Yeah, that roach is uh, pretty awesome, man. Are you talking about my roach? My ro oh, I see. Cue ball wants the roach. Uh, Ed Durbin is carrying the roach, um, or maybe it's the opposite way. Um, but you didn't expect the buck would break before. No, it didn't. Yeah, it was kind of weird, but it didn't break. But it did bend, and the, both of them wound up bending. Actually, you guys will wind up seeing the video. Hopefully, both of them did bend. But I'll be honest, so though, the, the buck did bend a little bit more. Um, now, that might be just the difference between – oh, wait, no. One of the biggest differences, and I probably shouldn't even be talking about it because you guys will see it in the re review, and now you guys won't watch it. Um, no, the, the M-Tech is actually thicker. It's thicker, especially out to the tip. So, like, its spine thickness goes out way farther than the Mesa. The Mesa really isn't made for hard use. It's for, like, camping stuff. But I did do some abusive stuff. Like I was sticking it really deep into wood and then bending it. You know, like I didn't think it would bend, honestly. I thought it would like bend and then come back. But I should kind of expect it is a fixed blade. Fixed blades aren't usually as hard as, you know, folding knife steels. But I can get it out. It's not broke. I can get it out. I'll bend it back. But we did do a little bit of abusive stuff, especially to the the m tech so um you guys will have to see how that did when the video comes um but yeah it was pretty interesting but man pretty i was pretty surprised with this little guy though this guy did pretty damn good so since mike emler's in here we might as well talk about it now um we have 46 people in here check this out guys you guys are never gonna fucking believe this the other day when we were live hey everyday edc Thank you, man. I don't know where the fuck you are right now. You're with a bunch of dummies. You're in the spot. Um, did you get it? No, no, I didn't get a haircut. No, this is just the way I calm it. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So the other day when we were live, I said, because we talked about the video that was doing so good. And I said, what did I say? It was up to 180,000. 295,000 views. It's about to hit 300,000 views. What the hell's going on? Sorry, guys. Hang on a second. Um, and that happened in three days. In three days, that damn video got over 100,000 views. That's insane. Also, another thing. I'm just going to say all this right now because I'm, like, so excited, guys. Like, this is insane to me. Two more 
foot followers and we're going to be at 13,000. Two more. So whoever's not following right now, I'd really appreciate it. I really would. Um, and also, liking the video, don't like this video tonight unless if you actually have fun or get something out of it. I want only the likes from people that actually liked the, the video today and got something out of it. Um, next thing, the subscribers went up. I think we were at 1.9 the other day. We're at 2.5. So two and a half thousand every 28 days is what we're getting. That's crazy to get. I remember how long it took to get a thousand followers. And now we're at two and a half thousand every 28 days. And it keeps going up. Like every day I wake up, like I, like I wake up and I'm like, and I look at my phone. What are we up to? <laughs> They say not to do that because it can drive you crazy because when it goes back down, and it will, it will. I, I I know it will. But right now I'm on that that roller coaster part, you know, so I'm excited. Um, what was the other thing? Um, everything is up. Check this out. This is the big one. Um, if I didn't say the big one already. So this one I think is kind of big to me. We are at a hundred and eighty thousand views every 48 hours 180 thousand views 285 percent higher than normal that's crazy that's crazy it's insane um in the last 28 days 696 thousand views uh, yeah, it's just, this whole thing is just so nuts. All right. I'm going to get off of this cause I know, um, you guys are, uh, like get on with the shit. Okay. So we got a lot of content today. Um, we got a lot of stuff in case you're not paying attention, remove your like until he does something productive. Thank you, Breeze. I appreciate you always having my back. Um, we actually are going to talk about something about Breeze because the other day we had a subject we were talking about and Breeze wasn't, Breeze wasn't here. So let's get into it. So Breeze has had a couple CJRB knives that hasn't served him very well. Like he's pretty tough on his knives, right? He's pretty tough on them. And I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't recommend certain uh, liner locks for Breeze. I would probably recommend something a little bit stronger or tougher, but not saying some liner locks wouldn't be perfect, but I think like if when you think of liner locks, usually you think of, you know, knives that like are just for cutting, you know, they're not going to be for anything harder than that. So we're going to talk about what would be a very tough knife, a knife that could handle the abuse under a hundred dollars. Now I know most of us are going to say cold steel, but what cold steel, which one would be the best now something that's not too crazy big like not something i mean not something gigantic something really tough but yet slicey you know it has to be a decent slicer um and but still robust enough to take some abuse and then we're going to also talk about smaller knives in that kind of category um kukri's are under 100 i'm the rat i thought about that oregon the rat one is actually not a bad idea because the rat one can take hell of abuse the one problem which isn't even a problem um is that the the the, the blade is a little softer so it will bend and it you know which i guess might be good because it doesn't snap the air light i like the air light that's a good idea um american law man that's a really good one um, I was thinking the code four, but I don't know how that aluminum would be. You know, it, it is kind of slick, you know, um, I don't know. I guess everybody's different. So I don't, they don't make the, do they make the code four and G10 at all? I don't think so. Uh, what else do we have? A lot of people are saying the American lawman. I bet you that's the one, but they don't do it in hollow no more. Do they? They only do it in flat grind. Am I right? Monster saying code four. That's what I was thinking, but I don't know if the I this is what I think. I think the aluminum would stand up the strongest. I think the aluminum would be great, especially for like lateral force or like light duty prying, not heavy duty breeze, light duty. But I just think they might be slick, you know, in the hand. It's not. It doesn't have a lot of texture. Even though I I agree. I think that's my favorite cold steel is the Code Four. 
Concept Main Street in my card, and that's the liners on 134. Yeah, I don't think that would work for him. I think he'd break that pretty quick, to be honest. Um, don't get me wrong. I think that's a very tough knife, but I think that's a utility-oriented knife, and he's looking for some stuff that can do light duty prying, scraping, uh, wedging, you know, like harder shit. So, I mean, think about it. The crag, he fucked the, 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 um, the CJRB crag shit on him. Um, I think he said, uh, was it the Feldspar breeze? Something else took a shit on him. The cold steel recon series. Oh, I don't know if I know the recon. I oh the recon one, the recon two. Damn, I wish I could stick around, but I've got to get everything ready to move tonight with my daughter. It's our Saturday tradition. Get with your daughter, bro. Get with your daughter. Um, you should have a whole box of knives showing up here any day now. Um, I don't even remember how many I sent. I know I sent at least ten. At least ten. I think it's more than that though. Um, Cold Steel's knives are now all flat ground. They stopped doing all grounds. Oh, shit. Well, no. Don't say that to me, man. Because I haven't bought a Code 4, and I really want a Code 4, but I want a Code 4 because it's a hollow grind. They didn't switch those, though, did they? Tell me they didn't switch those to flats. I hope they didn't, man. That would be so bad. Sheepdog Vanguard, not tough enough. Not tough enough. I'm telling you guys, we're talking Axis Locks. Possible frame locks, possible, but I think more more of access locks and um, possibly compression. But we're thinking more of a certain type of grind here, back locks or triad locks, triad locks and access locks. I think is where we're, we're headed with this. Sawzall works good, he says. <laughs> Um, yeah, it is thin. It is thin. That's the one problem, and that's what I mean. Like it's slick. It's thin. If it had thicker grip on it, you could really get down it. But that's a tough knife, man. That I mean, it's been tested. That thing is very, very tough. Um, I do think that uh, Jason Brown says, I beat the heck out of the Texel, the best tech Texel every day at work. That thing is taking a beating for a year and a half and stands up to whatever I throw at it. But how much is that? That's more than, isn't that more than uh, 100 bucks? I can't think of which knife that is. The Cold Steel SR1 Lite. Thirty nine ninety nine. Just saying, um, I'd spring for the S forty five version. Person, though, I didn't know they did an S forty five VM version. I agree with that. That yeah, that's a killer deal. Um, that does have a little bit of a thicker grind too, so that might be a little bit more up his alley. You can always lay the edge back. You know, um, there was a part in here we were going to talk about, so we might as well talk about it now. Um, lateral strength. I think that's how it would be called. So, like, strength for, like, like, say, prying sideways, right? So, the strength around this pivot area, because going this way, right, you got your stop pin and you got your lock, right, doing this and this. But going this way for a little light-duty prying tasks, um, how to know that your knife can take that, I think there's a couple little indicators that can kind of tell you, you know, how... Oh, it's S35 Knife Sergeant? Okay, okay. Um, wonder what the price difference is. But uh, how you know, like, your knife can take that. Well, one, if it doesn't have steel liners, I wouldn't recommend it, right? I think it should have some sort of liners in it to do that. Next thing, <clears throat> if you have... External stop pins. Um, oh, shit, I don't have one up here. Do I? I don't. But external stop pins. So, like, when you open it, like, if I open this knife and these stop, or the, the thumb studs wind up hitting right here, those aren't hitting. But I'm saying if they were and those were the stop pins, that can help a lot for the side to side because you have the stop pin hitting the scales. Now, Having um certain, I mean, some people argue that ball bearings um can kind of dent the inside if not done right. But I think if they are, if they have the cutouts on the blade and the scales, I don't think that's an issue. Breeze says 
prying copper staples out of boxes. If it can't handle that, forget about it. Yeah, so we're looking for something with a thick tip. I do think that SR1, um, that that uh, that cold steel, I think that's a really good idea because that would definitely handle that for sure. It's got a nice thick tip. Um, it comes in a tanto and a drop point. So a tanto would probably be the best for staples, but I think the drop point can handle it just fine. You have, you gave, I don't know what that means, Kirk. How to tell if your knife can handle light duty pry tasks? Was it under 20? Then, yep. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, totally, why doesn't he carry a small pry bar to some awesome? I'm sure he does have that stuff, but I think you just get into those, those moments, you know? It's just like when I explained before, um, like when I talked about doing construction. And your knife being your multi-tool. I completely get that. Because you're in so many different positions and this and that. You know, when you're hot, when you're sweaty, when your tool's across the thing, when you finally just got up to something or underneath something or you're hanging over something, who knows what situation you're going to be in. You're not going to hesitate to use your knife. Not a fucking chance. Like, especially, like, think about it, like, You've been working eight hours. Let's say eight hours. You're tired. You're done, right? And then you get stuck in a position where it's like, I can either get down or crawl out, go all the way over there and get this other tool, or I can just pull my knife out and do it right now. You're doing it right now. Like, it, it's just the way it goes. And you're in that position a lot. And, you know, it's just so many different weird things, you know, like he was just saying, prying staples, right? Um, you know, using a screwdriver would be, you know, a flathead screwdriver with a uh, with some pliers. Yeah, that would be the best. But that doesn't mean you're not going to run into something where you're just going to need to pull one of them out or two of them out or possibly separate some trim or something, you know. And it might only take a second. But and and also there's some tasks that aren't that bad for a knife. Like it's not even that hard use for a knife as long as the, it's built for it. Like geometry matters. We always talk about geometry, geometry, geometry. With the right geometry, a knife will be a pry bar all day. Thank you, baby. What? What'd you get? What is that? You got yourself a toy? Yeah, one, okay. ah, cheers, they're ladies. Like a, they're easier. They're like a in-between to learn how to juggle pins and balls because they have hairs on them. So you can grab them by the hairs yeah. and throw them the way you would a pin so you can get used to like juggling that way. Right. You know what I mean? But they're just nice and easy to catch for. Good job. You like those better than the other balls? No, I don't like them better, but like they're just, just different. They're just easier. Yeah. They're just, uh, I don't know. They're just easier to hold. They're probably better for people to learn with too because they're just easier to, to grip. You know, they're the cush balls. They're right, like, right, right. Yeah, I do know. Thank you. We throw, did you just take one of mine? No. Hey, you took one of mine, baby. Oh, it's right there. Will you get me hand me a jewel pod? Are you ready? Everyone here. Done. Um, everybody says hey. Hi. Um, okay, so Knife Sergeant says, um, Aaron Fe Fredericks is a custom maker. One of his models that he makes for Navy SEALs is a folder designed for breaching doors and such. His knives are quite reasonably priced, not cheap, but reasonable. I think some of the, the cold steel knives are perfect for like what we're talking about, especially for the price, because it is a knife designed for abuse, right? It's made and designed and tested for abuse, and the price is right. I mean, like you were saying, the 30, 40 bucks for uh, uh, an SR1 uh, light, I think that's what it's called. But I think that would be the best way to go. The problem. This is the small problem with those. And this is why I was kind of going with a little bit of uh, access lock. Is they, they're not fun to fidget with. They're just not. Like, they're okay, but they're not that fun. Spider codes have been strong for me. I've never broken one. Yeah, I think the tips are too weak. Because if you're talking about prying staples, think about it. Are you taking your PM2 and prying staples? No, you're not. Maybe a, um, a shaman, but now we're talking about like 200 bucks. So I, I already thought of Spyderco. I thought of the Manix because the lock, I think, is strong enough. I think all that, but the geometry just doesn't. The tip's not strong enough. 
yeah, the shaman, but the shaman's a little a little out there. Um, if the shaman was the price of a manix, mini recon one, 50 bucks right now on eBay. Um, our uh, breeze is ready to like the video now. Yeah, buddy. Why the why the hell are Fox knives so high priced? Kaiser does it better. MKMs. It's because they're they're Italian. So that's why. It's just the, you know, the price thing. Um, Jared better watch how he talks to Kara. She's gonna grab him by the hair and tell <laughs> Why I'm I'm sweet to her. I'm nice to her. Um, we had a juggling club at my school back in the day. Lots of fun. I can't juggle. Uh, Jesus, who is using their knives as a pry bar? What the fuck? No, it is not. Okay, so now I'm going to argue this point again. And I, you know what? And I'll even quote a little bit of Andrew Demko, and I will fill in some blanks. Okay, so he, Andrew Demko, I watched him grab a knife. He grabbed a knife, and he goes... Oh, this geometry is made for prying, you know, and he was talking about it and he says this knife or this geometry is not made for just cutting. If it was made for just cutting, it wouldn't be this fucking thick in the spine and this thick behind the edge. That doesn't make sense. You don't need that kind of geometry to cut through stuff. It's made to do other stuff. It's made to cut, pry, scrape. Uh, separate things, use a, use as a wedge. You don't make knives th to a certain thickness, right, just for cutting. And then if we want to take it even farther, you don't make knives that can hold up a 1,000 pounds that are only made for cutting. Like, think about that, you know. Um, like, I understand, like, you might get into a situation where you need to rock it out right you're cutting and then you need to rock it out and pull it out but that's still that ain't gonna be that, that that's not gonna be no more than 50 pounds all right 100 pounds max i think he said to baton your knife has to be able to hold like 100 pounds if it can hold 100 pounds it can baton but when we're talking about pure geometry just the blade passing through materials 180 thousands blade stock that is hell 160 thousands you don't need that unless if you're doing other shit and a lot of knives are made to do other shit a lot of knives are made to be a multi-tool a lot of knives are made to be mini pry bars scrapers uh wedges all that stuff they are i don't care what anybody says because you can talk to knife makers and they'll tell you that I made this to be to withstand all the abuse you could throw at it because I know what people do with their knives out in the field. Now, don't get me wrong. There are more knives. I don't know about more. I said that wrong. There are plenty of knives that are made for just cutting. I 100% agree because, you know, and I understand you say it's a knife. It's a knife. You know, use the right tool, right? Use the right tool. A hammer's made to nail or hammer stuff. A knife's made to cut and a pry bar's made to pry. But sometimes, sometimes you use your the back of your hammer to rip something open. Sometimes you use, you know what I mean? Like you do different things. So it's just the way it goes. On a job site, you're going to use what you got available at the in that moment, especially when you're in a bad position or not bad, but in a tough position or not even in just construction in life, you know? So, um, I would use my Formex scout for prying, but none of my others. They, like, that knife is obviously made for fucking prying. <laughs> that knife's made to do anything. Like, that, that's what I would call an indestructible knife. But the, the problem with it is, is it's not very practical. Like, a lot of people aren't carrying around one of those in their pockets. But I'll say whoever is, is damn sure prepared for anything. Um, see now that knife, the last thing it's made to do is cut. I don't know about the last thing, but it's not made to cut well. It, it sacrifices cutting performance to fill in other blanks. It's kind of like even some blade shapes and grinds. They're made. You're, you're sacrificing some cutting performance to give yourself some strength for a little bit of this. Does that mean you're prying doors off of hallways or tile up from the floor? No. It just means that if you need to do a little, like, Okay, here's an example. When I'm at work, sometimes we have to take these bottles that are like old bottles, right? And we have to take the corks out 
and we have to pour them out. Now these corks will have the 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 alcohol which is filled with sugar in it, and it'll literally be like adhe it, adhesive. It'll be glued basically to the thing. You cannot pull it out. You can't. And a lot of times when you try to pull it out, it'll just break apart. And this because they're very old. They're done. Like that's why they're being taken apart and dumped out. But so, so what I'll do is I'll bring a knife and I'll wedge it in between. And I have to do this like a thousand times. So it's not like just one time. I have to do this literally like a thousand, two thousand times. I, I wedge it in between the cork and the glass bottle. And I go like this and I, I get it to rock its way up. So then I can pull it out and it just basically breaks the glue. It's not going to hurt my knife. Now, I wouldn't do that with a Kershaw leak, but, you know, um, I probably with my open L, I use the handle though. Yeah, I think some knives, like, there, it depends on which one, like, certain parts of it are capable. Like, say, um, like the 940. The 940, if you don't use the very tip of it, the very, very, very tip of it, but you like get it back to here, you can pry with the tip of it. You just don't want to pry with the absolute tip. You want to pry like a little bit right there because it's so thick. A lot of knives are like that. Um, Let's talk micarta. We are going to talk micarta. What is your favorite micarta material? I love burlap micarta the best. Um, I don't really have a favorite. My, my absolute favorite would probably be cross-cut micarta, cross-cut uh, linen micarta probably, but I love linen, but I love all micarta, all of it, every bit of it. I love burlap. I love every bit of it, but I do really like linen micarta um, or what's it called? Um, like a green canvas micarta. I love canvas micarta, cross-cut canvas, cross-cut linen micarta. The 8020 is the ultimate knife for sure, but it's hard to tell that to somebody because it's hard to tell somebody, Hey, get this knife and it can, it'll handle anything you throw at it. Trust me. You can, it will take anything you throw at it. it you could blow it up with a fucking nuclear missile and it'll be standing there still, but it's going to cost you about $400, 450 bucks. People are going to shit their pants. They're not going to be willing to do that. They're just going to say, fuck that, man. I'll just go get this. You know, I'll just go break a hundred of these. That's what they'll do. They'll say, I'll go get $150 knives and break them every month and just replace them before they'll do that. Don't get me wrong. I, I agree. I think that that is the ultimate knife. Um, the, the lock strength. I got one sitting right over here. If I could reach it, I'd grab it. I'd have to get up. Um, yeah, I thought about talking about some Leathermans, the one with the S30V blade or the one with the 154 CM. I think that is a great alternative to having if you're going to carry a slicer because a lot of people don't like pry bar knives multi i call them multi-tool knives but what they could do is carry an actual multi-tool which has a knife on it like a leatherman the leatherman what's the one with the uh with the s30v on it hey jared how does the kaiser roach compare to the cvv praxis is that even a fair comparison it's not a fair comparison i'll say the roach is awesome but it's not comparable the neutral ergos of the Praxis does make it a little bit more practical, but this thing is, it's just different. It's badass just in a different way. Um, I love them both, but so like I would recommend like the Praxis to anybody, like even Breeze, I'd recommend that, but I wouldn't tell them to pry with it. But if you're going to want to scrape pry twist and, you know, and wedge and all that stuff, I think a cold steel would be the way to go. The only problem is you're not going to be able to, to get the fidget factor. Now the next thing, which is going to cost a little bit more, you could get a Benchmade Griptilian with the sheep's foot, or which is like 120 bucks, or do the badass thing and get the Hogue Ritter RSK MK1, which I think would be okay for that stuff. I think that, that would be able to withstand a lot. I don't understand why so few fixed blades with full-blown finger choils don't round out that choil for comfort. I love the White River Knives does that on this. I know what you mean, where you got the finger choil and it's rounded out right here where it's nice and comfortable. Um, I don't know. I like having good choils. I love good choils. I don't need them, but... 
if I can get up, I want to be able to get close to the blade. If I can get up close to the blade without, you know, choking up, but just get up nice, I don't need it. But if I can't get up nice and close to the blade, give me a choil so I can choke up. Um, anyone know where I could get customized uh, customized thumb stud? Yeah, Etsy. Um, well, it was comfortable. Yeah, the, the, the roach is very comfortable. It is so, so comfortable. Spanky! Hey, man, thank you for the donation. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. How is it going, everyone? Here's five bones for Jared and the Knife Fund, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Should I get the Dylan Mallory Forest or a production fixed blade? I don't know which either one of those is. I don't know what the Forest is or which fixed blade, so I can't really answer that. Yeah, Etsy equals customized thumb studs. Um, Back to uh, my Carta really quick, though. Where is it? So... I didn't realize, you know, I said that the this little Civivi um, Drifter 2 had the because it has the snake skin micarta, but I didn't notice that it actually has like cross cut sections in it. I'm not going to be able to show you guys, but in the review, I'll show it. It's kind of weird. I don't I don't think I don't know. OK, first of all, I don't know. But I think this might be a side cut section of the original from the hooligan. Maybe my hooligan just had shit my car up. But after the video, after the unboxing, I really started looking at this stuff. And it it I can tell it's the same my car, but it's different. So I'm wondering if they flipped it on the side and started cutting it side cut. I think the best micarta is definitely the one that comes on Kaiser's Genie. The new Genie is so soft. You know what? If you think that, because it is, you're right. If you think this is good, try this Roach. Because there's such a bigger, it's just more, you know? So it's so much softer. Like this almost feels hard compared to how soft the Roach is. I mean, the roach is like holding a pillow. I mean, it is so soft. Um, but which is going to end up darkening up, but you can always wash it and stuff. The Leatherman Charge. Yes, the Leatherman Charge. Thank you, Freedom Fox. The Leatherman Charge has an S30V, but it's 160 and starting to get heavy. Yeah, I didn't know it was that much. They have one with a 154 CM blade, too. It's a little less. Joseph Juarez. Thank you, man. Thank you for being so helpful and generous with your man. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, I skipped forward guys. Um, thank you, Joseph. I, I really do appreciate it. What knife would you like to see a dressed up exclusive version done on it? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't really have to have a dressed up version, to be honest. But this would be cool. Like these, because this is kind of like that kind of knife, a dressed up version knife. So maybe something like this, just because it's badass. But I don't know. I'm not much for the dressed up knives. Don't get me wrong. I like them, and I think they look awesome. I really do. And there are some knives that I think it's like, damn, that looks good. But um, I can't really think of knives that I would just... You know, like say, I want this one dressed up. Oh, you know what is a good one, actually? The Esprit. This would look really good dressed up. With maybe, uh, the because you can do the back spacer and the pocket clip. Um, you have the opportunity, I guess, to do the hardware because the hardware is titanium. I think it's titanium. And maybe a pivot collar. Awesome knife. Um, the Leatherman Wave Plus, I think, has the 154 CM. So I think that's a great option for people that want to use a, that want to have a slicer. They don't want to have a multi-tool type of knife, but they want a multi-tool because you can just carry both. A lot of people just say, man, I don't, because those multi-tools do get heavy. They are pretty big. They do get thick, you know. Um, a lot of people leave them in their cars, and then if they need a screwdriver, they go get it. Right. But when they need to cut something, they just pull their knife out of their pocket. So, but I get it though. Like, if you're the type of person that you don't mind carrying 
one of those leather things on your belt. You can carry it right on your belt. Then it's out of the way. Some people don't like to carry them because they don't like the way it looks. I don't mind the way it looks. I would carry one on my belt, like with the, the just the belt cover, you know, and then you can carry the Le Leatherman Wave in there. Those are extremely useful. I got my first knife Olight did. I like it. I'm going to get the new one. They're, do they're doing some in titanium? I didn't know that. That's awesome. That knife is pretty cool. That knife is damn cool. I like that. How are you liking that? I like it. I do like it a lot. Um, it's damn good, man. It's a real Patrick. Thank you, man. Here you go, brother. Love your stuff. Knives coming your way soon. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, bud. Thank you. Thank you, man. Um, so this is awesome, man. It's such a good knife. Now, I um, once I put some oil on it, it did get a lot smoother. The detent is perfect for like the reverse flick, very snappy. Um, it is a light detent, but you kind of enjoy it light because of it's a nail nick, you know, or a fuller, but it's so easy. I can even do it left-handed and it actually has a really cool ting to it. Um, I, I'm not going to be able to get it come over to come over the mic, but. It's got a nice little ting to it. Very, very slicey. I think it's 90 thousandths, the whole blade. It's got to be 10 thousandths behind the edge. I mean, this is a mega slicer. The clip actually looks pretty good on it. Um, I like it. I like it quite a bit. Now, I do have one huge complaint. Not that huge, but it's huge. Massive. It's so stupid. This is the dumbest shit I've seen in a long time. Mike Emler. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that, bud. Thank you so much. I really do, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's definitely, dude, it's making me uh, smile so big. I'm loving it. I'm definitely loving it. And and yours is uh, right behind me for sure. Um, Look at this lock bar. Okay. Now watch when I turn it towards now look at the the liner right here they cut that out as soon as it'll focus they cut it out but then left the material of the damn handle right here so they cut out the liner for access to the lock bar but didn't cut out the damn scale right here just the liner not the scale so of course, it's kind of an easy fix because now I'll just be able to just cut back right here without cutting back any of the steel right here. So I can literally just cut this back just a little tiny bit and it'll be perfect. But it's tight though, man. I didn't realize how tight it was until after I did the unboxing. What's up, babe? What are you doing? Okay, guys, I need to tell you guys something. It's really important. They can't see you. You're blurry. Oh, did you go back? Because you got to refocus it. You fucked it all up. I'll go slow. Did it work? I don't know. Scoot up. You're falling off. No, up. Okay, guys. Um, okay, so I just want to give um, a genuine review on the baby banter from a lady perspective i'm pissed i'm pissed and i hate that the camera is blurry right now it's really upsetting me anyway i'm really upset about this honestly i don't like it and i'm really mad because i wanted to like the shit out of this I thing loved it. i thought that i did okay and i was trying so hard to love it but at the end of the day i just how much is this knife Nope. I would pay 30. It's got titanium hardware. I don't care. Stuff. And I'm going to explain why. I'd rather take it without that. I'd rather take it with steel and I'd take it for 30. If that. My issue mainly is the blade shape. It gives off a vibe. Like it's like, oh, I'm a downward tip. But it's not a useful one. Okay. The mixture of its short length downward tip and slightly bellyish belly, um, 
honestly is really shitty. Like when I go to use this thing, right? And I go to cut on a, a uh, on like a flat surface, right? The angle at which I want to move my hand to do it is not actually the tip that you get on there. It's the bottom of the blade. So to actually get the tip, no you sense. have to, listen, you have to, I just don't like the angle at which I have to go to use the tip. I just don't like it. Uh -huh. I'm used to my downward tip squad, which you barely have to do, but this to be at the tip because it's already so far down. With this guy, you got to be up like this. And I don't like that. But my bigger issue is just like it doesn't cut that well for me. I'm just not a fan. Oh, you're out of your mind. I feel like I have better or uh, cheaper knives that just fly through things. Like, I don't know. I, I think it's honestly the stubbiness of it. So with the thumb studs on it, they get in my way a lot because it already doesn't have a lot of space. Right. And then you, you have to also consider that your fingers in the choil, right? So all that is in the way of your cutting path. Look how much blade that leaves me left. Boop. Yeah, baby. You have a lot of knives like that. Though. I know, but because of their downward tips and the shape of their blade, that more narrow shape, you get more use out of the real estate. I, I just it, I don't like it. I said it is. I said, but I don't like the way it is. Okay. It's trying to be a leaf. Well, I think you should just uh, try it. No. Another day instead of shitting on it after one it. day of working with it because I no 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 I you don't it, have to grab stuff baby I've, I've brought it to work three different times and I've carried it outside of work two How? different times I've had it the whole time I've how yes I, I look it. at that knife and tell me it's not been used by me come on this on the other hand would be um a good competitor in my opinion so this is the Kaiser Lee right here let me see that bad boy it took my the same one. No, it actually doesn't. It's a slight, slight difference, but a very, I want this to focus. Okay, there it goes. Because this one doesn't have that round belly, it just operates differently when I use it. Do I know all the technical terms to explain what I'm trying to explain? No, I don't. But what I can do is show you guys the difference here. And this roundish, leaf, almost leaf-like blade shape on the Civivi, um, just really messes up my cutting flow. Can I ask you this? Like this one is can just, I ask you something? so can I ask like you something? ready to go. Like, look, I barely have to cant up my hand to be full tip. Can I ask you something? Full tip. Can I ask you something? No. Um, but it doesn't cut as well. Ask you what, what, what? Well, this should cut far better than this. This is a thinner blade and better geometry. Second yeah. of all, do you think maybe leverage? Do you think maybe you're just so used to your knives that this one was just different? And maybe you just need to get used I said to that it. I definitely am used to a certain type of tip and that it felt weird to cant my arm that way. And I didn't like that. And I know that's because I'm used to a certain type of knife. Yeah, but my point is, is that that thing is trying to be in that category. What category? The category of small, useful EDC knives. Yeah. And I'm full just saying. Grip, full hand, little tiny blade EDC. I kind of like the, the chaparral or something like dark that. Dark gravity. She's right. We got I don't like it from the jump. I'll never carry it to start liking it. I don't like either banter. So for those of you, I'd love to know, for those of you that are out there that don't like the banter, can you please tell me your reasons why? And for those of you that do like the banter, can you comment some reasons why? Because honest to God, like I'm really torn about it. I love the color. I love the idea of it, right? It's small. The action is really good in my opinion. I wish the liner um, wasn't like jimped in the way it is. It's a little rough for jimping. And in my opinion, it could use a touch more. Like I like when the lock bar is a bit more sticking out. There's a lot of access. I, there's a lot of access as far as like the scale goes on this side being cut back. But I like it when the liner itself actually sticks out, which it does. Um, there's just something about it that's, like just a little off but like again that's a super nitpick thing like yeah because the liner's like really easy to get to on this like it's super easy okay i want to see what some people are uh, saying but yeah we got some of those cubies on the way actually they should be here anytime um okay Man's life. Need the kubi garage you might be up your alley kara okay I will check i'm not out. sure oh. which one that one is but we do have four or five of their new models on the way make care of you the tough light for a whole week yeah that's like the same night she wouldn't because it's a backlock 
That'd be frustrating, but I would if it was for the sake of like. She you. wouldn't. She's lying. I've tried. When did you say Kara carry a tough lock? I haven't. I've tried to get you to carry back locks. Oh. The blocky handle isn't helping either. Yeah. The ergos, you know what? That's kind of the word I was missing is the overall ergonomics just make me feel weird. Um, the blade shape just isn't for you, Kara. I get it. You like what it, you like. Yes, that's totally true. It's just like it threw me off because the blade shape technically on paper is what I like. It just in not on paper. It just didn't flow the way my others do. Um, Ben Banter's just died a little inside. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I know he made that for females. I love. I and I again. He I made love, that specifically for you. No, stop. He did. Watch his Blade HQ thing. He says it all about it. Talks all about it. Okay. Um, I carry it. Banter fifth pocket. I'm a fan of spear pointers blades myself for EDC. Yeah, and that's the thing I don't like, and I think it like is like treading on those grounds. But I don't know. Um, okay, uh, EDC's nuts says, I only had the original banter, but I didn't really like it much. It was very dull out of the box, and even after sharpening it, it didn't cut as well as I would have imagined given the geometry. And that's the thing I feel like. I know on paper it makes sense, but I just feel like it's not grind in the way it should. Like, it's not doing what I feel like based off the logic of its specs that it should it and it's not bad it's just like man some of these other knives i just have to touch things and they cut apart you know what i mean that but, one still has a factory edge blade. i know and i'm saying the factory edge is not it's great um but yeah i mean it's definitely uh so kara doesn't like the ergos and the faulty leverage exactly um Okay, we have somebody new to the channel, channel, um, and this is their first live stream. Let me see if I can find it on this site so we can put that up. That's really cool. What up? These, uh, I don't know how to say the name. Oh. PC, Pacau. 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 Hi, I am welcome, new to welcome. the channel, but I really enjoy the content. My first live stream. That's awesome, man. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm gonna get down to the bottom. All right, Peter. Hi, Peter. That's their preferences. Absolutely, absolutely. I think she just needs to carry it a little bit more. But I mean, if she doesn't like, she doesn't like it. She probably won't ever try to carry it again. So it I love matter. the way it fits in my pocket. On a positive note, even though it's a deep carry clip, which normally, if you guys uh, have been longtime followers of the channel, you've heard me say before, deep carry clips are bad for women's pockets because they push the knife further into a pocket that already doesn't have space. Right? This one's too small. So matter, the though. baby banter is already small enough. So even though it has that deep carry, it, it can work. But believe it or not, there are women's pockets where that thing is going to fill it, like top to bottom, and they still might not be able to work with the deep carry. But I think for the most part, it's okay. So, but yeah, I just I heard you guys talking about some stuff. Um, okay, what does Kara think of the chaparral? That's a knife. Small knife, but it is a back lock. lock. She won't. We had it. that one here once. Didn't we, we own it. You know, you've never carried. It. I've tried to get you to carry it. You won't carry it. I've tried. What are all these I've, times that you beg me to carry things? I just. I don't even want to talk it. about it because I can't believe you don't remember. I talk to you about it all the time. I walked up to you earlier and threw a knife in your face, Joshua. Thank you for the donation. Playing games. Uh, yeah. I was wanting an opinion about Nitro V on fixed blade user, but the female perspective may. Be earned a life. Yay! Thank um, you so much. Thank you for the donation. Uh, Nitro V for uh, fixed blades, I think is is just fine. I think it's good. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty well rounded steel. I usually say it's like similar to fourteen uh, C. I don't I don't know if the toughness is as tough as fourteen C, but I'm sure it's plenty tough. I think it's a good steel. I like it a lot. I like Nitro V. I think it's a fantastic steel. Um, I think, um, I think you'd you'd be happy with it. Pacow! Thank you for the donation, Peter. Peter, thank you. Peter Pacow. Appreciate it. Are you part cow? Is that what that stands for? Part cow? No, stands for Pacow. You don't remember that in the song? No. Thank you, man. I appreciate the donation. Pacow. The Chaparral has too thin of a lock bar for my fat fingers. Hurt to use. Wanted to. Damn it, my 
chat just went away from me. Um, I that's why I I always said that I wish it had the Boyd dent because to me a Boyd dent always feels more comfortable with a thin lock bar. What does an A in front of money represent? Oh, up here, maybe American five dollars. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. It's actually super weird. I don't know. Can you hover your mouse over it? It just uh, no idea. I don't know. Um, it's his last name, Peter Pacow. Um. Oh, is it? For real? That's My really ancestors like that. were cow herders. <laughs> it's oh, Australian. Australian. Oh, okay, okay. Um, one minute knife reviews deserves some more follows. Definitely go and check him out over here. Thank you, Fiend. I appreciate that. Jared, you and Karen need to do some review collab. She was actually in the fixed blade thing earlier. So you'll get a lot of her in the fixed blade video. Um, I think they're both ugly. Um, and I'm glad other people enjoy them, though. Um, not Australian. It's English. Oh, okay. Oh it's gosh. English. Got the TS. Oh, did you guys see uh, Love Them Knives' new design? Got the TS319. I am in love with it. Super well made and fidgety. So, Love Them Knives. I love them again. Sorry. Love Them Knives did a design. Um, I forget the guy you did the design with, but it's a big uh button lock with multi-row bearings you only reverse flick it it's uh it looks badass but they're only making 50 models of it um i think it's the 329 the tucson ts 329 it's already available but it's already like going for like 500 bucks like it's crazy because you know they only making 50 of them he says Later, he's thinking about doing more of the same design, just a little bit smaller for the people that don't want them that big. What's up? I just wanted to say that the McKenna did what the banter did wrong. So, like, the McKenna to me is, like, the perfect version of what the banter, in my opinion, did wrong. Two completely different knives. But okay. Wait, uh, or maybe I'm thinking of the Malaya. What's the one? The, the CGRB Malaya. One? The Malaya. Malaya. My bad. Malaya. The Malaya, Malaya, Malaya. So, to me, in my opinion... The banter is like 10 times better than the Malaya. Oh, I've just had a better time with it. Even um, cutting geometry, everything. More LC200N for us in the wetlands. I LC200N is a great steal. I like it. How hard is 20 CV to get a mirror polish? Got a Benchmade 550-1 that needs some attention. It's not hard to put a mirror polish on it. Um, and usually... 20 CV does great with a polished edge, but some heat treats make it to where it'll take a great polish. It'll look really good. It'll still be very sharp. But if the heat treat is ran soft, it might not have a lot of bite. Um, that goes for just about any steel and any heat treat. But when it's done well, it, it'll hold its bite really well. And it, it's incredible with a mirror polished edge. So it just kind of depends, but usually it does really good. M390, 20 CV, and 204P it's usually does really good. I, I know the name, but I can't remember. Well, I'm not going to be able to explain it to you. Kara, have you tried the mini freak from Ben Trade? Uh, I've tried the full size one. I'm trying to remember. She if did I, try. She I think just I doesn't remember. It in a it. Store, didn't I? No, you flipped it here. We had it for a little oh, bit. Oh, we did. Oh, no, no, wait. No. That was the mini uh, RSK yeah, MK1, no, 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 not the freak. That the I have not. Which I is basically not. the same thing. You know what I do like, though, is the mini North, or it's not a mini, it's just normal, but the North Fork, Fork, or whatever it is, North Fork Axis by uh, Benchmade. It's really, really, actually such an underrated knife. And what's that Japanese designer from Benchmade that did that one carbon I fiber? I forget. It starts with an N. Um, I forget. Namash. Fiend, what's his name? Not, 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 not Natsuki. I'm just making Into sure. knives now. He's... It's just weird now. No one finds it cool, even though I use rescue knives for the fire service. Um, I think uh, you'd be surprised how many people find it cool and love it and everything else. Just probably your little, yeah, the Cebu Saibu, or Nakamari. Yes, thank you, thank you. Nakamara. Yeah. Um. But but yeah, I think you'd be surprised. Um. I, there's a big community, and a lot of people do like them, and a lot of people don't even realize. That how much they're um, they love knives, and I mean that in a way like they carry a knife and everything, but they don't know that other people enjoy knives, so then they don't wind up, you know, getting as deep as they normally would can, um, if they knew. Can I just say something really quick? And yeah, then I will on. let you guys have your stream. 
So I just, this popped into my head today. I told this story on the channel forever ago, like more than a year ago, probably. But anyway, I was at work and like, everybody knows me as like the person who always has a knife, right? Like, I'm sure you guys are all that person in your life too. So anyway, every, this one uh, kid, he was like a cart pusher guy. He knew that I had knives um, or that I was into them or whatever. He comes up to me one day, okay, with like, I don't even know what type of piece of shit that it was. He comes up and he goes, here, check this out. It's better and much safer than that uh, crappy automatic stuff you use. And I just look at him and I go, my knives are not automatic. And he's like, I'm not. I'm like, oh. And he's like, oh. Well, it's safer though, cause look, it has this, and it was one of those knives that had like the um, the uh, click on safety thing or whatever, you know, like where it has like the extra button you can like push yeah, up. Yeah, lock. Yeah, but it's like the extra handle lock though. Okay. Like you know, like sometimes it'll be like a liner lock or something, but then they yeah. add that on as well. Yeah. It was something like that, except for it was like a Milwaukee knife from like um Home Depot. Yeah, I know what you're talking. And about. it had it had this very strange lock. And I looked at it and I go, well, actually, I would bet safety on my knife any day of the week. I said, because right now I could snap the plastic scales right off your knife. And if you do anything that requires any effort, you're going to be the one with a knife, you know, stabbing you, not me. Not to mention that it's probably dull. And he's like, no, this thing is sharp. Da, 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 da. And he's like being so cocky about the whole thing. So I said, OK, cut a piece of paper. He takes a piece of paper. He couldn't even get it started uh -huh. he couldn't even get it to start yeah. when he finally held the paper tight enough that he did it went maybe it a centimeter and just ripped yeah, yeah. and then mine i it, i was carrying the mini sheepdog yeah by the way uh -huh. and the mini sheepdog that i had been beating on all day was like yeah perfect s but it was just funny and then he held it and he's like oh it's not automatic did it and he was so surprised how fast yeah, it wasn't it, opened. A, it wasn't an assisted and it knife wasn't assisted no he said automatic I, but he mean us. He meant the stuff. But he, yeah, it was just. And he says nuts. I just want to think about that. Check this out. It's much safer than that assisted crap you use. <laughs> Shout out to Cooper, the cocker spaniel man. Thank you for the donation. Edie sees these nuts. Ow. Thank you, man. I appreciate the donation. Shout out to the um, dog. You going to play your game? I'm gonna go play my game. All right. Um, I'm gonna be playing the Call of Duty Vanguard. Beta. 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 Um, pretty cool so far. Lots of, lots of differences between this and Cold War, but pretty cool. Also, um, guys, for those of you who are Patreons or somebody that would consider being a Patreon or anything like that, would you ever have interest in seeing Jared's ridiculously funny gameplay from Call of Duty? If so, let him know because I have a funny one and I think he should give it, like, post it to the Patreon so you guys can see it. Um, but yeah, I am a gamer. Yes, I am an incredibly avid gamer. I play COD, actually. You don't just have to play COD. What's up, Lib Libbeard? Libertarian? Lib? Libbeardarian. Or is it Libertarian? No, it's Libbeard. <sighs> All right. Battlefield. I've never played Battlefield. I know, but you know what? I'm going to say this. The new Call of Duty Vanguard is so similar to Bad Battlefield in the sense that it has the breakable environments now. So, I mean, that was something they were way behind Battlefield on, but it has the interactive environment so you can break walls, shut doors, da 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 da, da. And they've added some deathmatch modes where it's like 24 versus 24. And so they're, they're trying to finally step up and get with the times on some of that stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, and I play on the PS5. So any of you who ever want to connect and play, my name is Neebs Knives on the PS5. And Jared is Mr. Neebs Knives. Um, so, yeah. Hit us up! All right. Um, so. Love you. Love you. I wanted to talk a little bit. Well, I got a bunch of shit to talk about. So um, the dual grit edges. So a bunch of people asked me about the dual grit edges. And then I just recently did one on that uh excuse me that leung ma knife now it went really well on that leung ma and i'm about to do a couple more um now i do think certain steels it might be better on than others and somebody asked me like how did i sharpen it like meaning like 
did I just go all the way to polish and then drop back down a grit on that side or how did I do it? So the way I did it with, and I got really good results, but the burr was a little tough to remove. So what I did was I just sharpened it like normal, both the same angle on both sides, sharpened it like normal. And then once I got the 600 grit, I stopped on one side and I just continued on the other side going through my grits because once I passed the 600 grit, I just have a couple more stones and it hardly removes any seal. Yes, I wound up getting a good size burr and removing it was tough, but I think it's going to be tough regardless. However, the next one I do, I think I'm probably going to polish both sides and then lay grit over the side I want to. I think that might be... Um, uh, possibly a better way to do it. Not saying that the one I did had bad results in any way. I'm just, because I've done a bunch of edges where I've polished both sides. And so I do a mirror polished edge. Then I go drop down to a 600 grit edge and I lay just like a grit pattern over the polished. You can actually see at the top of the bevel is still polished. And for whatever reason, man, it makes the edge so damn sharp. Now it looks like a toothy finish, so it's not polished anymore. However, microscopically in between each grip pattern, it's like still polished. So it carries its bite. I don't know, baby. It, uh, it winds up having a lot, a lot of bite and possibly even having better edge retention. I'm not sure about that part, but hey, Jared, are there any authorized quiet carry dealers you recommend? Whoever will sell them. I don't, you know, I don't know. They're, they're tough to get sometimes. But um, I would just look at all the local night dealers, whoever's got them. Um, wait, Wolf Springs are bombed. So smooth. Like Reptilian had a longer break in time, but smooth too. My Reptilian was pretty smooth right away. Mine, um, yeah, it was pretty smooth right away. Um, but mine didn't have a coated blade. Mine has a uh, stone washed or satin blade. Uh, people are doing it with M4. It's working good. Do you have any experience? Oh, yeah. I've sharpened a ton of S9 EB. Love it. 13K. Did we get it? Come on. Did we get it? Don't, don't be teasing me. 13K. Bang. That's awesome, man. Thank you, whoever... Uh, just gave the follow. I don't know if he's in here or not. Probably not, but I appreciate the follow. Thank you. We made it, guys. We made it. Well, not yet. We're going. We're we're shooting for fifteen. Remember that. So we're going to talk a little bit. Thank you, Pacal. What are your thoughts on the the Ligoli knife? I don't know what that is. Um, does anybody understand why a knife? Would be a titanium blade. What purpose does that give you? It's not. It's a titanium coating. So companies will lie to you. And they'll say that the blade. It's like a titanium nitrate. It's just a coating. They wouldn't do a blade out of titanium. And if they did. Don't trust it. It ain't going to be no good. Titanium doesn't get hard enough. To be of any use. And even if it does get hard enough. Right. And you have an edge on it. The second it gets dull. It's going to be so hard to sharpen. It doesn't have the, the abilities to have a hardness like steel. It's great for handle material because it's very tough. It's a strong material. It has good memory. So uh, meaning like if you bend it, when you let it go, it goes back to true. So it has great memory, great strength. It's corrosion resistant and it's very light. So to be like pound for pound, I think it's pound for pound, as strong as titanium, or maybe not pound for pound, but it's as strong as titanium, but lighter and corrosion resistant and all the other things I already said. But you would not want it for a blade. Um, it's so awesome to see growth of this channel. Great job to everyone that has helped that make that possible. Yes, ab absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you to everybody. Yeah, it's not titanium. So what it is, is a titanium nitride. Uh, coating like I have a knife right here somewhere that has it it's just a coating on the blade that's all it is it's like a gray coating it's supposed to just help reduce corrosion thank you Dwayne I appreciate that 
Uh, my neighbor works for a knife company that blows ass quality wise, but I can't tell him. He's just a paper pusher and has no clue. Happens. What's up, Mark? Um, so the Ruby Stones. The other day I meant to talk about them and I didn't get to talk about them too much, so I figured I'd bring them in. Now, you can get these extremely cheap. You can get them in the size to fit a cami or to get to fit the work sharp. Or you can even get bench stones. Bench stones are a little bit harder to find. A few months ago, I bought a block, a big brick, and I got it for like 50 bucks. And I was so excited. Like, damn it, I can't believe I got this for 50 bucks. I was so excited. And then they uh, contacted me and said that they actually, they sold it, basically. So that I they shit the bed and I couldn't get it. I was very upset because it was it was like this tall by like this. It was just a big old brick of it. That would have been amazing, but I couldn't get it. Anyways, these little stones will last forever. It's very, very hard. It's like a ceramic almost, but it has rubies on it instead of diamonds. So kind of like a, a resin bonded diamond stone, except for it's a resin bonded ruby stone or something. It's very hard. Um, now, I like to use uh, soap and water on it or an oil, uh, but works really good. It's three thousand grit so it's not going to be a sharpening stone now this is the thing about it though it actually cuts faster than you would imagine okay so it's not a fast cutting st a stone because it's three thousand grit however it has the ability to act kind of like a 1500 grit yet finish like a three thousand it is it's a little different um i don't know if that's just the rubies in it or what but Usually a 3,000 grit isn't cutting nothing. Like, you're not going to get a burr off of it usually. Um, so, because it's just so fine. You're just basically polishing the surface. With this, you can actually get a burr on it and get a good polish on it. Now, you're going to want to make sure you're very close to a polish before using it. But you can actually hear how hard it is. This stone, whatever the stone that they like to sell with the rubies, is shit. This stone here is supposed to be 10,000 grit. It's absolute garbage. It's basically like a piece of marble. I don't know what it is. Um, I've tried to use it a couple times. It will polish your edge. Don't get me wrong. It'll polish your edge. I just don't like it. Shit. Shit. It might work better for, like, kitchen knives or something. There are a lot of stones. One of these days, I'm going to do a stone uh, video about all my stones. I'm just going to do like uh, all my stuff. Like instead of a knife collection, I'm going to do a stone collection. All right. Next, conditioning stones for your veneve stones. When you use your veneve stones, it's going to be really quick. That little conditioning stone. If you get the barkeeper's friend, that powder, get the barkeeper's friend and go to your sink and sprinkle it on your veneve stones. Use your conditioning stone to wipe the uh, the barkeeper's friend on your stone. It works so good. So, so good. It'll clean the shit out of them. How many stones do you have? I don't know. 50? 80? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe 40, 50? I don't know, to be honest. It depends on how you look at it. Big stones, 20. Some, with You count my small stones, too, like these type of stones and stuff. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think that would be awesome. A little stone video. Um, tie coatings are used on drill bits, and most of them suck. Stick with the HSS jobber bits, and you're good to go. Addicted to knives. Some stainless steel are non magnetic. Some stainless steels are not. Yeah, some stainless steels are non magnetic. Or very, very low magnetic. So, like when I used to uh, do a lot of scrapping, there were a lot of stainless steels that were like barely magnetic. They had a very, very tiny, tiny bit of, of magnet to them. Um, are you curious about tungsten carbon, tungsten carbide knives? No, not really. Um, my driveway is gravel. I haven't bothered to count <laughs> <laughs> Smart ass. Um, Jared, I know this might be a dumb question, but can I put a satin finish on a blade with stones? 
diamond stones or just use sandpaper. 300 grit sandpaper is what you're going to want to use. You want to put a satin finish on a knife, get 300 grit sandpaper, you're good to go. Um, I would use 300 grit sandpaper um, and you could try to go one direction, like don't scrub it. Because if you scrub it, the scratches will be like this. So just go one direction when you do it and try to keep them perfectly straight. Um, one of these days, Lion Steel or someone else needs to do that integrated pocket clip that's on the thrill that sinks back into the scale. I know exactly what you're talking about, where you have to push the button on one side, you push it, and it pushes out over here. So you have to like, you have to pinch it, and you push here, and then the clip pops out, and then you can put it in and out of your pocket. I think that's awesome. I want to talk about clips just really quickly, very quickly. So knives like this that are this type of size, this type of thickness, everything. I love deep carry clips just as much as the next guy, okay? Just as much as you, Fox. I love deep, po deep carry pocket clips. However... It gets a point. There is a point to where it's like, are are, are we uh, sacrificing our ergos and you know comfort of the handle to carry it in our pockets? Because I gotta say, this is uncomfortable. A clip this high on this thin of a knife. I mean, it's just ridiculous. This is not comfortable at all. I don't even feel like I'm holding onto the knife. I just feel like I'm holding onto the clip. It hurts. It really does. Why would we advocate for clips like this on these type of knives? Um, now, uh, Kaiser has done a few that they're deep carry, but they're lower profile. They're a little wider. They're a little softer. They're a little different. And I think those might be the answer. However, it's like they'll do a clip like this and everybody will make it seem like it's a cheap shit clip because it's not deep carry. But all, but in reality, though, it would be so much. This would be unbelievably comfortable without this deep carry clip. Don't get me wrong. This one's okay, but it's still all I feel is that clip. All I feel is the clip. Like, seriously, all this is right in my palm, like just digging in it. You know, um, I just think that we need to come up with a clip design for medium-sized knives or even just deep carry clips that aren't like this. You know, I, I do like the clips on large knives, certain large knives, but then I hate them on others. It's just weird. Um, a spring clip. Um, well, well, I guess there's different kinds of spring clips, but, but yeah, just a regular spring clip like this, you mean, I mean, that would be cool. I wouldn't mind that, but then you got a million people bitching that they don't like it because it's not deep carry. I like deep carry too, but there's gotta be a way to do deep carry and not, not sacrifice comfort. I think I think I almost like regular clips better. For an example, the Kaiser Cosmic has such a great comfortable clip that works great going in and out of the pocket. So I want to agree with you because I do personally like non-deep carry clips a little bit better. So in the hand, I like them way better. <laughs> way, way better. Like I can sit here and hold this thing and I don't feel the clip Nunyan, not at all. Now there are some knives that I can't. There's deep carry clips, like even this, this guy. This guy's got a deep carry clip. I don't feel it. Well, I mean, I feel it, but it's not bad because of this turn right here. So I don't really feel that one too much. Um, this one's not bad because I'm over the top of it because it has that perfect size where it's not bad. You see how it's hanging out a little bit. So I think it just depends on the size because then you can have deep carry. But I think if it's a specific size, it should be like a rule. This size does not get deep carry clips or unless, unless if they can do them like those ones that Kaiser does. The thinner profile knives need the clips that wrap around the end and mount from underneath the scale. Those work better. 
I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you're right. But then they'd be a bitch to switch and flip and everything else. I'm telling you, those Kaiser clips are pretty damn good. Okay. Um. So, I got a few things here. So, there's something big that's happening here real soon, guys. Something real big. The Tucson TS-237. I don't remember the clip on that. But they're usually not deep carry. Um. Ah, good luck in China to listen at this point. We can't even get them to switch to T8s. All the good companies have. All the good companies. T8s. 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 You just got to, uh, just certain ones. Certain ones are doing a good job. Um, you guys heard me about LTK's new knife. You guys want to see it? Have you guys already seen it? LTK's design knife. Hey, mostly folders, but a bit of everything. How about a flashlight style clip? A little groove in the handle. You can pop the clip on and off. Huh. I never thought about that. I don't know how that would work. I think people would be worried about it popping. I don't know. Maybe not. I guess your light doesn't pop off. Uh, thank you for the donation, by the way. Good for you, cue ball. That's actually a pretty good clip. You're right. The the little tiny Benchmade deep carry clip, that one's not bad. That's not bad. I do think uh, it's more of like this part right here more than the whole clip. But, yeah, I think that clip's pretty good. Um, and it's not bad in the hand either. At least I don't think it is. T8 is the lesser version of... Of T1000 from Terminator. Facts. Facts. <laughs> oh, Lamet clips. But that's not deep carry. Um, There's a lot of great deep carry clips out there. But I'm specifically talking about for knives this size. Thin, slim, not long. It's literally as wide as a palm. See that? When you get that, now all I feel is this. I don't feel this. I just feel this and this because it's the size. All right. Um. Oh, I got a couple good stories tonight. Some good stories tonight. Uh, I talked about that. Okay, I was going to talk about all this stuff. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, Lefty EDC. I love that fucker, man. I love Lefty, man. When I watch his videos, I hope he's in here, man. I love you, brother. I love your channel, man. I, I, I literally could just watch one of your videos and write down an entire list of things I'm going to talk about in mine. <laughs> Good. Um, not that I'm cringing or anything. Uh, you know, I love the fucking guy, but there's just sometimes like there's like things he says and does, and I'm thinking like, what? <laughs> hey, why are you talking like that, man? What are you saying? But uh, Loctite. He was talking about Loctite, um, which he did take it back, and I understand what he means. So like, when you get a knife. And it starts coming apart, right? Because it's not Loctite. That, that's an issue because they didn't Loctite it, right? However, not having a knife Loctite and it coming apart, that's a good thing. Because, well, there's two levels to it, right? So a knife that does not have Loctite on it and you're flipping it and you're flipping it. And it starts to have the screw starts backing out and it starts getting off centered. And then you got to take the pivot screw out. You got to put, um, and then you got to put Loctite in it and put it back in. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. The reason why it's a good thing is because it shows how tight the tolerances are. The tolerances are so tight that flipping it and flipping it and flipping it is making the parts because they're so tight, right? Um, uh, if they were very loosey goosey, then you probably they probably wouldn't matter because all the parts would just be swinging around past each other. You want a knife like that that's so tight tolerance 
like the, even the sabenza, the sabenza, when you start flipping it a hundred times, if you don't lock tight the pivot, it's going to start coming out. Uh, hinders, hinders, their body screws will start backing out. Is just the way they are. So who hasn't hit that like button? We're only taking likes from people that are enjoying the live, only enjoying it. So um, I appreciate if you're enjoying yourself and you like the topics we're talking about, please drop a like. If not, don't even dare. Don't do it. Um, okay, so let's look at the TS-329. Then we are going to look at some tattoos. Then we're going to tell some stories. There's a couple other topics I wanted to hit on. But, hey, cue ball. Thank you, man. The 10 bones. Jared, super excited for you and your channel. Oh, man, thank you so much. Grateful to be a part of this awesome community. Looking forward to supporting you into the future. You deserve this. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. And there's something really big happening soon, guys. Something real fucking big. Something like that's, in my opinion, it's like the biggest thing. But uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Pretty fucking excited. Like on another level of excitement. You guys seen the bug out in aluminum scales? Yeah, I did. I actually seen it on DBK knives. They uh they did an abusive test on it. Um so let's look at LTK's thing really quick. I got some tattoos pulled up. Let's just look at some tattoos really quick. Some knife tats. Thank you, Monster. I appreciate that. I'm gonna try to keep an intention over here. So if anybody does donate, I will see it. Let's check. No, I wish, Sergeant. I wish that part. It's not It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. But maybe even better than that. Maybe even better. I think it's better. I do. I think it's better. Um, I think it's better for sure. Um, all right. Let's check out some knife tattoos really quick. We'll do this really quick because some people don't have tattoos. A lot of us do. Let's check it out. So this is tattoos of knives. Now this happens to be on forearms specifically. Um, I can change it and go to any, uh, oops, sorry guys, went a little too quick there. I can go to any body part and ge gender, but we're gonna look at forearms really quick. Some of these are pretty cool. They're a little too basic. So me personally, if I got a tattoo of a knife, Oh, shit, it's going too fast. I think I would get something specific. Something I do want to get a tattoo of a knife. I do. But I want to get something more specific and something that's a little more unique to me. Maybe even like a design I really love or a design I know or a custom maker I really love. Something like that. Or even a production company I really love. I do kind of like this professional kitchen one. This is kind of cool. Um, if you guys can see it. Blow the screen up if your screens aren't blown up so you guys can see this really good. I'm trying to go nice and slow. Um, oh, that girl's face over here with the Bowie knife, that's kind of cool. You know, I kind of like some of the, the flower with the knives, but eh, I don't know. I do want to get a badass knife tattoo, though. Oh, this is kind of cool. He's got a fixed blade, a pocket knife, looks like uh, a, um, a jet knife. He's got literally all the knives on his forearm. That's actually pretty cool. This one that's colored with the roses, that's pretty cool with the dagger. Oh, I don't know why it jumped. Um, These are all kind of just okay. Let's go down a little bit farther. I think these are all men's forearms, by the way. I'm not positive. This native knife is kind of cool. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Something like that. These are all like the same, though. Where the fuck is the uniqueness? It's like everybody went to the same tattoo shop and paint pointed at the same three knives on the wall. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Oh, shit, man. I'm sorry, guys. It just does that to me. I go like this because there was one up there I wanted to see. 
But yeah, most of these are very similar. That one looks like it has a spider as a handle or something. That one's kind of cool. I do like skulls a lot. So a knife through a skull is kind of cool. I just don't know if I would get that. No, oh, I guess we didn't go too far. All right, I'm going to do like one or two more rows. Because all these are junk. I mean, not junk, but not really what I'm looking for. All right, I'm going to scroll up to the top really quick and look at, or here, right here. Let's look at cool. We have cool. They're all the same. Damn it. These guys are all just wearing the same exact shit. It almost seems like knife tattoos are just all the damn same. There's got to be better ones. Chef ones, snake, chef knife, snake tattoo, sword. Let's try out the sword one. I know a lot of knife shapes are very generic, but get a Kershaw Week tattoo. <laughs> Um, hey, I want to get a tattoo of a knife. Oh, sweet. Which one? You know, a knife. Like a handle with a blade. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I know they're very generic looking, but when you get a specific design, like think about this. Think about a Recenti design or a Chris Reeves knife. You know, I think getting the details in the knife are going to be what's important. Like instead of just getting the shape of a knife, like getting like, okay, look at this one. Look at this ninja sword. Um, uh, samurai sword, like not saying this one. I do think this one's could be done better, but you see, you can see the, the, the handle woved, woven, whatever. Um, you can see the leather. I think that's kind of cool. So, but if you did that with a folder, I think that might be badass. Like where you got the screws, the pivot, the hardware, and you got it nice and close or, Possibly a full thing with literally all the details. I think that would be badass. All right, let's get out of this. I can tell I'm losing you guys. All right. Um, I'm going to grab or I'm going to pull up. Hopefully I can pull it up. LTK's uh, knife. Or his design. The two. Oh, everybody asked me not to show any more two sons. But there's only 50 of these getting made. And it's already going for so much money. There's nothing I can do to change that. I think I'm right about that. Let's see if I did that right. No, I did not. That's not it. No, it's There it is. Okay, so well, let me look at something real quick. Make sure my address isn't popping up or anything. Alright, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. All right, I'm gonna show you guys this knife. This is the one that LTK just designed. It's a button lock. It's up to $405 right now. Hold on a second. So it is a button lock. You guys can see the milling, carbon fiber. Um, looks like it has a beautiful blade shape. LTK loves this blade shape. Now you can see how you can open it. It's only got the, a reverse flicking aperture. So you, it doesn't have any thumb studs. Very good ergos, it looks like. And it doesn't have any... Um, other way to deploy it but the fuller so you can see it's going to be a flicker now it has clips i don't like but it still might be work good because you can see the holes in the clip which most likely means it's not going to have like crazy strong tension here it is broken down look at ltk bang there's ltk's uh uh signature or whatever his logo multi-row bearings Oh, shit. You can see the big old spring in there. You can see up here we got a nice washer for the multi-row bearings and a nice big stop pen. Uh, it looks like it curls around right there. You can see 
where the detent is for the button lock. Very, very cool. Let's go to the next one. All right, we're, oh, here it is closed, so you can see all reverse flicking action. That thing looks so badass, doesn't it? Oh, I love it. I think it looks so badass. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I do want one. But what's up, RM? RM Kinky? Um, Yeah, I know. That stop pen. I didn't like where it was either. Um, But I don't know. I don't know. It, it's hard to say. But yes, it is. I did. Cassie came down today with the kids. Oh, awesome, Mom. I just seen you were in here. Tell her I said hi. Um, but yeah, it's a little expensive. Ugh, a little. It's a lot expensive, but there's only 50 of them going to be made, and it's uh, LTK's first design, um, and it's a collab, so it's not just him. It's him and uh, Kubetric or whatever. I forget his name um, that are joining it. So, Oh, Richie B's in the house. What's up, Richie? He says, yeah, I would prefer if it were full tie as well. 400 is insane. I agree. I I don't like that carbon fiber, to be honest. I'm kind of – no, he likes knives to look like one side and the other. That's why he chose a button lock. I already know that. It's, you know, because when you flip it over, it's the exact same on both sides. I just don't know why he wouldn't have just done full tie on both sides. That milling would have looked so badass with a stonewashed blade – with the milling on the handle, with the fuller, oh, that would have been so sweet. It's probably going to reach 500, to be honest. I'm going to have to check that out. I don't know what that, which one that is. Concept's got a new big knife out. No, that's not the big news. That's not the big news. Um, but it's big news for LTK, though. Um, all right, guys, I'll tell you guys the big news. Okay. But I'm going to do this quick because we got story time and there was a couple more things I want to talk about. Okay. So first, before I get into this, um, I probably shouldn't even be talking about it until it gets here. Um, but it's hard not to, it's hard not to, I've, I've been kind of holding back for the past few weeks. So before I get into it, I just want to say, I know. This channel has been extremely, extremely blessed by a ton of you guys. You guys have all been very amazing. You guys have donated so much to the channel, and, and all of you have made it what it is, 100%. This channel would not exist without you guys, without you guys participating in these lives, without you guys' donations, without the Patreon, without all the donations, just everything. And someone in the community has been a massive massive, 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 massive supporter of the channel and has donated an ex extreme amount, like beyond, beyond, you know, anything anybody can fathom what a person would donate to a channel or how they would support a channel. And most of you guys already know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Mr. Amazing. He is an anonymous person that has supported this channel in an extreme massive way. And he just recently made a purchase um, for a, a, a full-size belt grinding system for me to do regrinds on knives. Um, it's already been ordered, so it's in the process of being built and shipped, and it's it's a couple thousand dollars. I mean, it's it's a lot of money. And it's a whole setup, so it's going to make it possible for me to do regrinds and do things like that. It's going to help me take not just the channel, but uh, the thing, you know, because I wanted the channel to be like a, a big a business, right? I, I, you know, I try to put everything together. When I look at the revenue that the, the channel does make, I try to put it all, they're all different parts, right? Like even your guys' donations, like that's a separate part. And every bit of it is what makes it possible. Like you take one part out and it, it, it all crumbles. So it is a massive thing, everything that happens. And having one more part, you know, like I do the knife sharpening. 
right? That 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 helps out so much when you guys use my knife sharpening service. And I, I appreciate you guys using it. So and being able to do that adds another revenue onto the channel. Now, if I can do regrinds and do things like that, and not even just regrinds, but just like things like that, you know, um, it, it, it's just another thing. And maybe possibly, thank you, mother, um, maybe possibly even making knives in the future. Who knows, right? But it it definitely opens up that door and makes it very possible now, that doesn't mean I'm going to try to cut anybody's throat. It doesn't mean I'm going to try to take anybody's business. It's going to take me a bit to learn, obviously. I, you know, I've never ground a knife, at least not professionally. But it does open up the door for me to start learning. And it's a massive thing to me. Um, and, yeah, I, I'm very, very excited about it. And hopefully, here in the near future, I'll be able to take orders for regrinds and be able to do regrinds. Possibly in the future, maybe even make blades. I don't know, right? I don't know exactly where it's going to take me and what I'm going to be capable of doing, but I know at least, excuse me, at the very least, because I know how determined I am with things. So I already know I'll be doing regrinds here, probably, you know, as fast as, you know, somebody can possibly do it. Um, well, possibly do it in the way that they're comfortable enough to do it for somebody else, right? I'll do my own shit, but I'm not going to do anybody else's shit unless if I know for sure I can't fuck it up. Um, thank you, Q-Ball. I appreciate that. But, uh, but yeah, I could, I, right, I could do fixed blades. I could do probably a bunch of different stuff, but we'll see where it takes it. But I, I, I whew, it's, it's got me fucking trembling. Like, I don't get nervous too much. Um, I actually said this to him, like, it takes a lot to get me nervous. Like, like fucking, I'll wrestle a damn alligator right now and not skip a heartbeat. I promise you I would. Like, I'm just that way. I'll fucking climb a tower with no ropes. I don't care. But, like, things like this, you know, like, they could possibly benefit for the future and things like that. That's the stuff that, that gets my my heart uh, skipping a couple beats. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Because I know it does take some skill level, and there are jigs and things like that, but we'll see how it goes. Am I Steve Irwin? Um, yeah, I am. I'm part. I'm definitely. I've definitely. I've wrestled a couple gators in my day. I've had. Uh, I've had one actually, a pet one, but it wasn't like a big one or anything. But I've definitely had my fun with reptiles and gigantic uh, animals. I've wrestled a lot of animals, to be honest. I will send you the thing after this, Richie B, and show you. Um, we actually already talked about it. So me, Richie already knew about this. Me and him already talked about it. Um, but uh, but I'll show you the exact one. Um, the same one we that, that you recommended and everything. You already know which one, basically. Um, oh, monster. Don't say that. You're going to make me blush. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's get into some other things really quick. So we do have story time coming right around the corner. Uh, actually, we're already too late. We got to go to story time. All right, let's go to story time. You guys know this time, it's time to throw away the knife talk and get to story time. Thank you for the donation. Pacow. Let me pick that back up. Um, yeah, yeah, it was definitely... <laughs> It, it's going to be amazing, man. It's going to be awesome. I got some other things I got to get and get set up, but I am absolutely in the process of doing that. <laughs> um, okay, so I have two or three stories. Oh, man, I didn't get to this whole list of stuff. Man, I had a whole other page of stuff I wanted to talk about. Um, but, okay, so this first one is going to be about... Um, well, so the other day or yesterday or something like that, me and Kara were having a discussion. We were talking. I'm around the Chicago area, Chicago suburbs. Um, so, no, I'm not by any alligators. <laughs> but I, I've, uh, um, I have family down in Florida, and I've had pets and things like that. And I've always been an animal nut. So I've wrestled a lot of animals um, and human beings. But anyway, so me and Kara were talking the other day. And we were talking about the whole mask thing. And I was saying, I was like, man, you know, when I was a fugitive, I said, man, I would have loved for all this mask shit to be happening. Like, I wouldn't have 
one problem walking around with a damn mask on. You know, like when you're trying to stay hidden. Well, uh, then it came up this topic where I was talking about this time when um, I left my house to go and I had to go to work in the morning. And this, I wasn't like a fugitive yet or anything like that, but I, I was driving without a license. So I didn't have a license and the police in the area knew it, right? They knew I didn't. So even though technically, legally, they're not supposed to stop you for things like that because technically they don't know they have to actually you have to actually do something for them to stop you but uh but anyway so i pull out of my house i'm driving down the street and um i see him turn turn out i see him right and i know he knows me right he knows me i know him and he turns out behind me so i already know he's coming for me so i there's a gas station on the corner of where i'm heading so as i'm driving I pull into the gas station fast too, fast too. I slam on the brakes, hit it in park because I got to get out of the van. Because as, as long as his lights don't go on and he doesn't pull me over, he technically never pulled me over driving, right? So I get out and I go into the gas station, right? Well, he waits outside the gas station and he's waiting for a while. And in my head, I'm like, I ain't going nowhere. I'm staying in this gas station as long as it takes. He thinks I'm leaving. I ain't fucking leaving. He's got a long day ahead of him. That's what I'm thinking in my head. So I'm sitting in the gas station bullshitting with the gas station attendant. Like knowing what's about to happen. I make my phone calls, right? Like, listen, hey, I'm probably going to get arrested. You know, you might want to, you know, probably get down here, right? I might need you to pick up my car. Um, I'm in my work van, by the way. Anyways, so. I see him get out of his car. So at this point, he's wondering what's going on. Why is it taking him so long to get out and get back in his car? And he tried to hide too, by the way. I knew what he was going to do. Like he didn't sit out in the parking lot so that I could see him. He tried to hide to make it seem like he wasn't there. I'm not stupid. I know he's hiding. And I don't know where he's hiding, but I know he's hiding. Then uh, I kind of seen him coming around the gas station, like getting ready to walk in. So I go to walk out. Well, when I walk out, we cross paths. He tried to play it off, which I knew he was going to do because he doesn't want to give me the suspicion that I think he's going to get me. He wants to play it off so that I leave so that he can pull me over with lights on so that he has a for sure I caught you driving thing, right? Anyways, so when he walks in, I walk out and we crisscross where he tries to pretend like he's going in the gas station for something. So instead of going to my work van... I turn left and go to the bathroom. The bathrooms are on the outside of this gas station. I also had stuff on me that I didn't want him to find. You know what I mean? So I had to get rid of that. So I go into the bathroom, get rid of everything. And um, so I wait in there for a minute, right? Well, it's been a little while, and uh, the, the only reason why he came in was because he was wondering, like, what the fuck is going on? Where is this guy at? So, but as soon as I, he walked into the gas station and I walked out, he turned right around and walked back out. Like, he didn't sit in there. He was literally trying to get to his car so he could catch me. Well, since I went to the bathroom, now he's like, where the fuck did he go now? He doesn't know where I went. So he's, like, freaking out, like, walking around the gas station and everything. Well, then when I leave the bathroom, because now I don't have anything on me, I'm not that fearful, right? The worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to go to jail and I'm going to sign myself out. The, well, the worst thing that's going to happen is he's going to tow my shit. Anyways, well, he sees me finally. And now he's so pissed off that he hasn't been able to find me and has been wondering where the fuck I'm at, that he's ready to take me on right there. Like, he ain't waiting for me to get in the car no more. He's not waiting for anything. As soon as he sees me, he says my name, and he fucking, uh, you know, get your hands up, right? Get your hands up, all the bullshit. Um, I already knew it, so, you know, put my hands up, you know, um, start searching me, you know, and I'm playing it off, like, for what, you know, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, you know, he knows I don't have a license. He says, you're driving with no license. I said, I'm not driving. I'm just standing here. <laughs> No, he's like, don't play fucking dumb with me. You know, I got you on the, the cameras at the gas station and this and that, blah, blah, blah. I said, you didn't pull me over shit, right? And I'm saying all that anyways. So he's got me now, right? He's got me cuffed. 
ar- ar- about to arrest me, right? And I tell him, I said, listen, man, don't tow my shit. I said, my sister's on her way right now. I said, she'll pick it up. And he's like, uh, oh, no, no. Right before that, he goes, um, how does he say it? He says, you probably don't want your, because I had just gotten done dealing with a bunch of other shit. So at this point, like I'm struggling to pay for other shit. And it's going to cost me 500 bucks at the minimum to get the thing out of the tow yard, right? If he tows it. He, he, he goes, let me search your car. You ain't searching shit, bud. You ain't searching nothing. I knew there wasn't nothing in there, but there was one thing I was worried about. There was a generator in the back, and I didn't know how hot it was. All right? Let's just put it that way. I knew it was hot. I knew it was hot um, from my dad, uh, but... I didn't know how hot, meaning like if he looked the numbers up, were they going to be traced, right? But I'm thinking he's not even going to be worried about that. He's going to be looking for like drugs and guns and things like that. But I told him, no, fuck no, you ain't getting to my shit. And he's like, and then he blackmails me. He says, if you don't, because at first, you know, like normally if you can have somebody pick up the car, they're not going to tow it, right? That's just the way it is. They're not going to tow it. They're going to let you, you know, because why? Why would they tow it? If somebody's right there, family member, whatever, you're releasing it to them. They have a license. They'll just let it go. Well, he's like, if you don't let me search, he says, I'm fucking towing your car. And uh, and I'm arguing with him. Like, that's fucked up. That's blackmail. All right. And he's like, call it what it is. He says, I don't care. He's like, if you don't let me search, he's like, I'm going to take it to the tow yard. And he's like, and I'm going to rip the motherfucker apart. He says, I'll rip this van to pieces. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you motherfucker. I knew, you know, like it's like, what can you do? And I'm thinking like, I don't have anything in there. Why do I care so much? Normally I'm like, get fucked. Like, I don't care. You ain't, I don't care if I have nothing. Like, you ain't touching shit. But I'm thinking like, man, I can get out of a tow. I can get out of things getting damaged and broken. And, uh, you know, my sister will be there and I'll be out like soon, right? Overnight, maybe. I'll be out tomorrow um, at the worst. Spanky, thank you, bud. <laughs> Cops will rip your car apart and leave it. They will dump ashtrays on your seats and rip doors off. Never give a permission. Yeah, trust me, I got some stories. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I'm like, all right, all right. As like, but you have to swear. Right. If I let you in my van or if I give you permission to get in my van that you are going to let my sister leave with it. And he goes, you have my word. Go right ahead. Well, he starts going through it and everything. He can't find nothing. So now he's getting frustrated because he thinks I wasn't letting him in because I had something bad in there. I wasn't letting him in because I ain't just I ain't letting you in. Right. <laughs> I'm just a stubborn motherfucker. Why are you? You're not. No, fuck that. I'm not letting you search my shit. I don't care if I have anything or not. But once he realized I didn't have nothing, then he looks over at the damn generator. <laughs> so now he's checking out the generator and he starts running the numbers on it. And I'm like, fuck, my old man had just put it in there. And I know where my old man got it. I know all the details. So I know it's hot. I just don't know how, how hot, right? I'm thinking there's a, like, like who reports the numbers on generators, right? Um, so I'm thinking like, I got a good chance. I, I got a good chance. He's not going to find shit. Now, if I would have thought like that, I had a bad chance, like that those numbers were for sure called in, you know, like in all the details that for sure it would have been labeled hot. I would have never agreed to that. Right. Tow it, rip it apart. I don't give a shit. Like you're going to do it illegally and I'm going to get everything thrown out at the very least. But I really didn't want to get that tow fee. And I, I, I figured I had a really good chance. So he starts reading the numbers off, you know, on the, the radio. It comes back clean, right? That it's not hot. And uh, I wind up letting, uh, or my sister winds up coming. He, he was a man of his word. He let my sister take it. So I got out of that tow fee. And then I went to jail. Went to court the next morning. And they threw it out because he knew he didn't have a case. He didn't have a case because he didn't pull me over. And he wasn't pulling me over because of my license. He was pulling me over to search me. It had nothing to do with my license at all. He could give a fuck less if I'm driving with no license. He was looking at it for a reason to fuck with me. Anyways, but the point is, is that he didn't have a case anyways because he didn't pull me over. He hijacked me in a fucking gas station parking lot and then blackmailed me. So... 
they had to they it's not that they had to drop it it's just that he dropped it so when i went to court the next morning it was already thrown out um even though normally you know you'd have to go to court a couple times before that ever happens anyways um so but yes i've had my cars ripped apart tore apart like ripped i mean like literally ripped apart dashboard ripped off door panels ripped off everything i've had the worst shit with my cars i've had them take apart like uh parts of my engine you know like the air cleaners and stuff like that because that's like a way that people do transport stuff they'll just throw it in their air filter and um so i've had them do that i've had them do fucking everything thanks colin um so now there was another one um i was going to talk about this one's kind of fast though um yeah door fucking door panels and those things <clears throat> the problem when they rip them off like if i'm taking my door panels off right that you know how a lot of door panels if you don't know you don't know but a lot of them clip on so you know, you can like pop the clips. Some of them have other little tiny screws around the edges and stuff. It just depends on the car. But when they rip them off, they don't do any of that. They just fucking pry it off and all your clips to your door panel gets broken. All of them. So they, they and sometimes they don't even break them all. They'll break half of them and leave it like hanging just enough to get their arms in there and their hands in there but you can't fix it you got to order new clips sometimes you got to order a new door panel they ain't paying for the shit um i got into an argument with somebody uh, um a while back and they were like oh well they have to pay for that stuff good luck good luck you ain't getting them to pay for shit man i've had them rob me literally rob me and it, it winds up being your word against theirs they, there ain't nothing to, i've gotten robbed uh, being transferred to jail. I've gotten robbed. They've broken into my house. Yeah, I had a warrant, but they still didn't have a warrant for my house. And they, they, I've had them rob me at my house, like full blown, like just rob my whole fucking house. Um, but, uh, but anyways, uh, wow, son, I guess we need to talk more. Well, mom, you've known all this stuff, so I don't know what else you need to hear. Um, cameras nowadays. Mm, yeah. You think so? It's always off when it when it goes the other way around, right? And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not like trying to make it seem like they're all bad or anything like that. I've had a lot of good cops help me out. I've had a lot of them save my ass, so I'm not trying to play that. I had a cop save me from another cop before, from when he was tearing my shit apart because he knew my family and uh, he showed up. My dad had just died and he knew it, and he showed up and they uh, they were arresting me and he made them put all my stuff back put my car back together and let me go i got lucky on that one um and i've had that that kind of stuff happen a couple times anyway so this one is about my buddy that got shot so um this one's a quick story though hey mason thank you man congrats for the growing channel jared well deserved man oh man thank you so much i appreciate that thank you so much so there was this neighborhood, and it's like, I don't know, 20 buildings or something. 20 buildings back to back to back to back. Bunch of apartment buildings. Two-story apartment buildings. Each one has like three um, steps, stair steps going up to it. So there's like three parts equaling one building and a whole bunch of them, right? It used to be, it was pretty nice at one time a little bit, but then it turned to Section 8. When it turned to Section 8, it got, like, so bad. Like, I mean, like, beyond bad. Like, everybody in there was a dope dealer. Uh, it was just, it just basically turned into a project. Uh, so, they recently actually changed it. And, I, like, I think, like, 90% of everybody who lived there had to leave because they changed it from Section 8, changed it back. Anyways, so, my buddy lived at one of these apartments in there at the end and so when you pulled in you had to pull in turn left and go all the way down to the end and i used to go over there all the time hang out with my buddy and um and he where he lived he would like come out of his uh the door by the stairs you know because you walk up the stairs to the door and then you can get into the building and then pick an apartment so he'd always be hanging out on the porch you know he did little things here and there you guys can imagine and uh he just happened to be there when 
another car and I pulled in right after this. But when I pulled in, he had just gotten shot. And what happened was, was he was standing in that doorway and somebody thought he was somebody else. So they pulled up. He's in the doorway, just standing there. He sees this car pull up and the car just pulls up, stops, rolls down the window and just starts racking shots at him. Bah, 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 bah. Winds up hitting him in the leg in a bad spot too. Like, uh, I mean, he was fine, but like it could have killed him, right? Like it was a bad spot. Um, anyways, so he gets fucking shot and, uh, all messed up. He falls back into the building, by the way, he falls back into the building. There's like a stairway right there. So he winds up not dying because of, I think because he fell backwards. I think that's what kind of saved him because the bullets were all over like where he was standing. So, and like behind him. So he probably didn't get shot because he wound up falling back. Um, that's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but, but yeah, he got lucky on that. And then I showed up like right after and, uh, you know, was like, what the fuck happened? You know? And, you know, he explained to me or whatever, but he wanted getting help. He wanted being all right. He lived, he lived, but, uh, gotta love a guy who jumped between the finger points of 14 C 28 and the shootout story in the same breath. <laughs> Thank you, Evolve. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Um, now, the other story I was going to tell. Okay, so I, I had a, a story between two, but I'm going to pick this other one. Um, I actually told it a while back. It's, it's a pretty innocent story. But so I'm at my house, and it's like 2 in the morning, right? I'm sleeping. I'm literally sleeping in my underwear, sleeping. Um, and... Next thing I know, I hear banging on my door. Just, and I know that fucking sound. Like, why the fuck are the cops here, right? I have a bull mastiff, and she ain't taking that shit. Like, she just starts going nuts. And she has the, the sense. She's like, if you know anything about bull mastiffs, bull mastiffs were bred to be, um, a po to, to hunt poachers. That was one thing, to hunt hunt poachers so poachers that would be on farmer's land hunting the animals a bull mastiff was bred and made to hunt them okay so they had to be able to fight their hunting dog and take them down by the neck and hold them down without killing them anyways also bred to be straight guard dogs that's why they're so good at guarding properties because that's what they were made for anyway so this dog knows when something's not right even like with door, I could have a hundred people show up at my door and she knows the difference. So I can hear her and I know like, it's gotta be like something bad, right? Either someone's breaking in my house or it's the cops. Right. And since they're banging on the door, it's well, the way they are, it's probably the cops. So I go downstairs. I'm still in my underwear, right? My dog, she's got a big old spiked collar on her looking all mean as hell. Right. She's a sweetheart, but Unless if, you know, you tell her not to be. But anyway, so I got her by the back of the collar like this. In my fucking underwear, by the way. I open the door. And I'm holding my dog like this. And she's roar, roar, like going at him and shit. And I'm like, what's up? And then they start asking me. They go, no, first they go, hey, can you step out? Or no, how do they say? It? They go, can you put your dog up? I said, she is put up. She's in her house. All right? So I'm in my house. You're at my house. She's in her house. She is put up. You're the one here trespassing, right? Maurice, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you for the donation, Maurice. So when he says that, and then he, you know, she's scared. Like he's backing up. There's two cops. And, you know, she's sitting there fucking like freaking out. And I'm, they don't know it, but I'm sicking her on them. I'm literally telling her to, to be mean. Because what it was is I would just go under my breath. So I could sit here and talk to you. And, and you couldn't hear it. Like you guys can hear it on the mic because it's right here. But if I'm all the way over here going, you probably can't hear it, but she can. And so she knows that means be mean, right? So I'm telling her at the same time. Plus she knows. She can see them. They got flashlights. You know, you can barely see them because they're shining them right in your fucking eyeballs and being dickheads. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Addicted to knives, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. 
So we lost a lot of people. People don't like it when I start throwing F-bombs every two seconds. Anyways, so they're standing out there. They, uh, they're they like, well, can you just come outside, right? Sure thing, bud. <laughs> so I don't want to go out there, but I'm not letting them in, right? So I'm in my underwear. I don't, you know, whatever. Uh, so I go outside. I shut the door. I leave my dog inside. <clears throat> now they start asking me. They're shining flashlights around my property and stuff, looking around. I'm in a pretty nice house, a pretty nice property, you know, um, in-ground pool, all kinds of shit, pretty, pretty decent. I'm at the end of a dead end, um, and he starts asking me, "Did you, were you just next door shaking the neighbor's door handle? I'm looking at him. I'm in my underwear, by the way. Just came, got out of bed. I said, do I look like I was just over there shaking door handles? And he looks at me and sees me in my underwear and stuff. He's like, well, we got a call saying that uh, a van, I had a work van, pulled up over there and started shaking their door handle and i just looked at him like he's stupid sorry i'm kicking shit um i looked at him like he was stupid i said why the fuck would i be at my neighbor's house rattling their damn door handle it doesn't make any sense now does it right like there's a lot of vans in this world right and then he says uh something like the kid is next door and he uh his dad called the cops or something like that, right? I found out the real story later, but and said that it was a van. We came over here. We seen your van, so we came to ask you. And uh, it's like, no, nah, man, no, I'm sorry. I can't help you, right? I was sleeping. So why don't you go look wherever else because it's not here, obviously. And at this point, he can tell I'm telling the truth. Right? He's getting the vibe like I'm getting frustrated at him. And... um they continue to try to ask me questions, the same questions. And so what they do, they ask the same questions, 10 different ways to see if they can twist it or turn it in any way to make you say it differently. And if you do, then they run on that, even though it's like, you just asked the question a little differently. So now the answers anyways. So they wind up leaving later. I wind up finding out that, um, that my neighbor had went out of town and his 17 year old son, who's a giant, by the way, uh, beta was sitting at home and I, I don't know if the wind shook the door. I don't fucking know. I have no idea what happened to his door, but he called his dad said, Hey dad, you know, like somebody just shook the door handle or something like that. And his dad, instead of him telling his son, yeah, we'll grow some fucking nuts and go open that door and see who's out there, right? That's what I would say to my 17-year-old son who's supposed to be a fucking grown man. Grow some nuts and get your ass out there and check that door, <laughs> right? It might be nothing, but at the very least, you know, go after the threat, right? There's a threat there. It's your job. You're man of the house now. I'm gone. Go check the threat, right? Instead of doing that, he calls the cops. And then the next day, he comes and uh, like apologizes to me. I'm like, it's all right, man. No, no worries, no worries. But then the next day, <laughs> the next day, comes over to my house drunk, like accusing me of doing that or something like that, and like accusing me of something else. So he was drunk as fuck. So I kicked him off my property, got into a big fight with him. Like none of it made sense. Like he was just drunk. But anyways, that was the end of that story. But um, hunker down, young Billy. The problem will leave eventually. <laughs> right? Pretend you're not there. Hide. Because they're definitely not going to come in if you're not home. It makes no sense. Be loud. Be loud. Show whoever's out there that there's somebody home. Like that. I don't know. The thing is, is that somebody... This thing, somebody trying to come in your house and somebody actually trying to come in your house. If they find out you're there, like if you answer the door or if you come to the door, they're not going to continue. They're going to leave or run or whatever. Now, when will they come and enter and go through when they've already planned that? Meaning if they shook the door handle and they didn't come through it, then they weren't planning on coming in anyways. Do you know what I mean? Because you don't you don't get to the door 
shake the handle, find out it's locked and leave. You planned on that door being locked. <laughs> you know what I mean? You were already planning on breaking the door in, going around the back and coming through the back or something. So show that you're there. They leave, you know, usually now I'm not saying people aren't going to over like come after you and break into your house and take you hostage. I'm not saying that won't happen. I'm just saying that the best thing you can do in a situation where you think somebody's trying to break in your house is make your presence known, make your presence known, make them know, Hey, there's somebody in this bitch. They'll most likely leave. Nobody wants to break into a threat, something that's unknown. Now, if they catch you going into your house from outside, that's another story. But when you're backed into a corner, it's like nobody wants to grab a, a, a cornered coon, right? Raccoon. You know, but like if a person's coming into their house, that's when you would get them or leaving their house because now they're not as big of a threat than if they're in their property. Anyways. Uh, meet my dogs, Tonto and Elmax. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. That is so good. I like that. I like that. That's hilarious. <laughs> I thought of naming like next dog I get. I might name him something crazy like that. That's good. I like that. I'm going to start going through the comments. So anybody have any comments, leave them now so I, I can read them. Because I, I wasn't reading because I'm telling the story. I can't really read. But uh, hunt or be hunted. Right. Exactly. Um, at least, at least look, at least look, at least find out. This was the thing with me was that that kid was big, big. I mean, like you would think he was a grown man. I'm talking about like 260, 270, probably six foot three, a giant. Like, he was a big dude. He was just, he was a baby Huey, right? Um, nothing wrong with that. You know, some people are fighters, some people aren't. He wasn't. But you're 17 years old. You're 17 years old. You're, you're a man. You're a grown man. Act like it. You know, what are you going to do when you have a wife and kids? What are you going to do when you do have a kid? Like, think about that. Like, at what point do you say, I got to grow my nuts now, right? Like, if that is a threat to you, right, that's not really a threat. So if you, you got to overcome your fears, that can't be the threat. That can't be where you draw the line. Do you know what I mean? Like, Somebody's shaking your door handle. That's not where you draw the line. Oh, Monster Racing, you out of here? Um, he's going to call daddy. Yeah, which I thought was so weird. And then the weirdest part to me wasn't even the son. That's not even the bad part to me. The bad part was the dad. Because my man, I know not every dad is the same. But my dad, if I called my dad... If I called my dad and I had the nuts to tell him somebody's shaking the door handle and the next words weren't out of my mouth, I'm going after him or um, something to that extent. Like he would have been so he would have been so disappointed in me. Like I don't even know what he would have done. He'd have slapped the shit out of me for sure because there there wouldn't be no way I could tell him. Like, come on, I mean he would have. His words would have been, go, go get him. What are you doing? Why are you talking to me? Fuck are you talking to me for, boy? Get your ass out there and fight that motherfucker. Or something, you know, something. Like, do something. Anything. Like, I'm not saying go fight somebody. I'm just saying, like, something. Like, don't, don't call me. Like, what am I supposed to do on the phone? Like, get yourself ready. Like, prepare yourself. Boys aren't being raised into men anymore. Yeah, I know. I know. And, you know, that doesn't mean, like, saying them words, like, boys ain't being raised to men anymore, that doesn't mean anything about violence or anything like that. It's just having the guts to, to how did, uh, Jordan Peterson said it really good. He says, uh, you want to be a, a man that's capable of great violence, but doesn't do it, right? You, you want to be a man that's capable, doesn't mean you do it, doesn't mean you are, doesn't mean you ever have. But you want to be at least capable of great violence and suppress it, right? And suppress it. Um, it's kind of like a, a warrior can always be a farmer and a gardener. But a gardener and a farmer can't always be a warrior, right? It's kind of like that mindset. 
like um you want to to at least have the the mindset of not running away from things and i don't know uh but yeah i don't think that that means you have to go and fight everything that moves i think it's definitely think accordingly and be logical about everything about everything and definitely don't go into things like if you can avoid a fight at any cost do it obviously but what we're talking about right now is somebody at your house. We're talking about a completely different... We're not talking about on the street getting into an argument or a bar fight or somebody bumping you on the corner. Obviously, avoid those situations. We're talking about a threat at your house. It's completely different. And even if you are going to call the police, even if you are going to do that, you haven't even identified a threat. It could have been the wind. could have been the wind. could have been a raccoon. Yes, I know the message you're referring to. A man needs to entertain the monster inside him in order to be taken seriously. If you don't appear threatening, then you will be messed with. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and like when he was on Joe Rogan and he, he said that, um, I think it was Joe Rogan when he said it, when he said about uh, you want to be capable. You know, it doesn't mean you want to do it, doesn't mean you want to try it, but you want to know that you're capable of great violence. But suppress it, you know. It's like knowing what you what you. What, it's basically saying like you know your lines, right? This is the line I will not allow to be crossed. If this line gets crossed. This is where I stand. I'm not gonna back up from that line. I'm not gonna move or bend. This is my line. And if you're not willing to defend that, whatever it is, whatever it is, it can be. I'm not gonna allow my boss to say this to me, right? I'm not going to allow uh, a person to do this to me. I'm not going to allow my girlfriend to act like this. I'm not going to allow my kids to do that. Whatever it is, it's just a line you draw where you say, this is my line. And I'm not letting anything sway me from that. And if it does, then I'm going to act accordingly. Cop brought my ex-wife <laughs> in divorce process. Great way to start off a sentence. To my door, she was beaten bad by roommates. Cop asked if I could take her in. Nope. I wanted to tell the cop, take her back and let the roommate finish the job. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad one. Don't, don't, don't. Oh, man, you know, as much as I advocate for men to protect women, I also don't advocate for men to, to, um, What's the word for it? to to allow bad behavior, you know, from women, right? Like, and from men either. But I'm just saying, from people in general. So yeah, that that's definitely a one that's nope, not gonna happen. Guess we have to mention elk meat now that Jared mentioned Joe Rogan. Oh man, I'd love some elk meat right now. I got my mouth watering. I love some good venison. I haven't had any good venison in a little while. Jared, do you prefer the frame locks over the liner locks on the Tucson knives? I think it just depends on the knife. Some liner locks are... Because the thing is, is that I guess it depends on which liner lock. Because they have regular liner locks and then they have frame locks that are like... That are liner locks, I guess, technically. But they're a frame lock. They just have some sort of material over the frame. Or over the, the lock. Like the 305. or And the 301. They're thick. If they didn't have the micarta or carbon fiber. They'd be a frame lock. So depends on which one. But I do like those. But I also like the regular frame lock. So it's, I don't really have a preference. I think I would just have a preference over this knife. Over that knife. Not just in general. You know. So if you ask me this knife versus this knife. Rather than just generally. Because I like a lot of their frame locks, and I like a lot of their uh, liner locks. Jared, what knife or knives have caught your eye under a hundred dollar mark that you've had lately? The Roach, the the, the Kaiser uh, Sheepdog non flipper. Uh, oh, the Civivi. Um, uh, what the hell is it? The Drifter 2. This is really good. Um, there's the Astacus Mini. This is also pretty good. All under $100. Um, this one's about $90. 
So this one's a little up there, but it's really good though. S35 VN blade steel. Um, there's a couple different versions, but this one's the micarta in carbon fiber. But they have a couple different versions. You can. I just did a uh, first impressions on it if you want to see it. That one's a good one. Um, but and then this roach is really good. Facts. Jared, what do you think about the Crescent series? The Crescent series. What's the Crescent series? Who makes them? The Crescent series. The Crescent series. I can't think of who, who makes that. Uh, Maurice? I can't think of it. Who, who makes it? Kaiser has had a great year so far. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the Kaiser Genie. I like it. The, the reverse flicking hole isn't the easiest to get to, but you can get to it. If you're lefty, you can get to it real easy. But it's not a left-handed knife, meaning the clip doesn't flip. But you can still get to it pretty, you know, not bad. I love the blade shape. I love the grind. The micarta is really nice, deep carry clip. It's not bad in the hand, even though it's slim because you can choke up right here. So it's a great knife. I like it a lot. Um, they have a couple different versions. This micarta is really nice, though. Pretty solid. I mean, it's not going to be as solid as a titanium frame lock one, but it's pretty solid, though. Good access to the lock bar. The front flipper works great. Yeah, pretty awesome. I like it. Um, Two Suns, though, like, if you have just $100 and you want to get the most out of it, like, literally the best bang for your buck, you can get a Two Sun. That'll, that'll get you. Um, uh. I would say between the 177 or the 223, you mean? Or do you really mean the 224? Because is there a 224? I thought it was the, I like the 223 better than the 117. But the 117, they're right there. The thing is, though, is that the 117 does have a reverse flicking hole. The problem is, is that it's chamfered. So, and it has a very strong detent. I'm just looking the, the one off. Um, TS2. I should just did it on here so everybody could see it. What an asshole of me. But if you mean the actual 224, what the hell, man? Yeah, if you mean the actual 224, then yeah, the 177. Because the 224, I wasn't a big fan of the TS224, to be honest. The grind just didn't match the handle. It was good. Don't get me wrong. The build quality is really good. If you like the style, it's great. I personally didn't like the style. I would prefer the 177. And even more than that, the, the 223, the Jelly Jerry design, and the 129, the 301, and um, yeah, I, the 267. Jared, who's your favorite Chinese knife company? Probably Riat. I think Riet does the best work. Um, who do I have the most of or who do I like the most? Because Riet's going to be also the most expensive. They're going to be the best, though. But they are the best. That's the thing. Like It's hard to say who's the best Chinese company because everybody knows the answer to that. That's not even a question because everybody knows the answer. I don't think you'll ever find any person that likes knives that's going to say anything different. You just can't. Like. Yes, they're more expensive, but their build quality, their fit, their finish, their, their capabilities, they can basically do anything we can do, and sometimes better. They take a lot of pride in their work. Like, what people think of Chinese companies, Riyadh takes a lot of pride in their work. We does too. Riyadh is just like, if this is we, this is Riyadh, right? They're right there. And then, like, here's Tucson, you know, and then other companies. Bang, 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 bang. Some companies do work, though, like, where, because it just depends on the knife. Like, you can have 10 knives, right? Where one out of the 10, the Tucson's the best. And three out of the 10, the Riyadh's the best. One out of, you know, the 10, the Wii was the best. So, just, you got to put model versus model. But all in all, Riyadh does the best work. It's hard not to say Riyadh because, put it this way, 
Who does the most OEM work for USA? RIA. We is very close being right there, second, but it's still RIA. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, Maurice. I really do. Because it's it's a huge mile marker. And guess what? This time next month, if everything goes right, if everything goes right, we should be at 14.5, at least according to my analytics right now. So this time next month, we'll be at 14.5, and then hopefully we'll be at 15 by then because the analytics keep going up and up. So we're pushing for 15 by next month, 15K by next month. That would be insane. Bye, Mom. I love you. Now tell me when you got a hold of Um, I love you. Good night. Um, fifteen by because it's saying two. Oh wait, no wait. What are we at? Thirteen, fourteen. 15. Yeah, we should be at. Fi oh no, yeah, we should be at fifteen and a half in twenty-eight days because we're at thirteen now. And it's going at 2.5 thousand every 28 days. That means we should be at 15.5 this time next month. That's insane. That's insane. I'm going to start doing shorts. I did my first short today, just so you guys know, if you guys don't know. So if you guys see my shorts on YouTube shorts, please watch it. Because the, the more you guys check it out, it's only 15 seconds or a one minute. I, no, the shorts are one minute. The stories are 15 seconds. I don't even know how to use them yet. But I did one of each today. I shit the bed on the, the, the story. But I did a good one on the um, on the reel. But it's 60 seconds. 60 seconds. I, I'm not putting any ads on them yet. Yet. But, you, you know, it just, if people watch them, then it helps other people see them. You saw the short cue ball? Did you like it? You like that shit? I'm trying to reel some uh, some customers in. <laughs> oh, you are a comet. I'm a comet. I might be. Um, let's talk sharpening talk. Let's talk sharpening talk. You guys thought I was out of here. I ain't even close. No, I'm just joking. We will get out of here soon, but we can definitely talk sharpening. See, for those of you guys that don't know. Every time it gets close to 10 o'clock, everybody suddenly wants to start talking sharpening talk. <laughs> they feel the time running thin. It was good. MC needs some short competition. Yes, he does. I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. You know, um, and I did want to say that, you know, with the channel growing big, you know, I know a lot of people, people tend, and I know it's easy to look at it like that, but people look at it. A lot of times when another channel starts blowing up, they tend to look at it like not that they're a bad guy, but they look at them in a, in a certain type of way. Right. But it's me getting bigger is only a good thing for everybody. And I mean that sincerely because I I try to shout people out. I try to put links up. Well, I don't. But Fiend does. And then I shout it out. So shout out to, to Q and Fiend. Shout out to Seems Logical Sound to all the moderators that do that because I do, I only want the best for every channel, literally, only the best. And I try to help. I try to send stuff out to them. Like right now, I probably got 30 knives out there, at least, you know, sending them out to people. And I try to do my best to, to sh talk about other channels and shout them out, whatever, put links in my, this, my videos and stuff. But, um, because, we got to get this motherfucker MC, right? <laughs> we got to get fucking MC out of here. So we got to catch up to his ass. What? I'm almost done. No. Give me five more minutes. Yeah. Jared, you and Kyle Red Wolf are my two favorites. That's awesome. Yeah, I like Kyle. Kyle's awesome. Um, it was cool going on his, uh, his live. Um, that was... Uh, That was um, the first time we um, got to chat, not like, you know, through messaging. He's awesome. No, I love that dick. Yeah, I like MC too. I'm just giving him shit. But I do have to think. Maybe don't. No. Nothing. Um, you just said you 
I read somebody's comment. No, he said there. He's a dick. I love that dick. Like I love MC I love as dick. right. I love that dick. Anyways, I love that dick over at MC's. I love MC's dick. Yes, I know. Um, all right. Um, but um, I like the freehand personally. But most people are probably better with a work sharp because, yeah, I know his name's Richard Dick Richard. Um, but no, I do like him a lot. Um. But I do want to say that, and not 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 towards him, towards a bunch of people, I guess, and not even towards anybody, right? But like, just to show like how seriously that I do take this, that you know, every single live that I've been on, and not even just lives, but just period, even meetings I've done, like on Zoom calls, phone calls I've taken, I've taken them so seriously, like to me. It is so important. It's such a big deal. And like when I first went on Knife Junkie, right? And every single time, I literally got prepared and ready to go on there with questions and things like that. Not knowing that I probably won't ever read it, right? But just being prepared, right? And not not just being prepared, but with the time. Like I'm early. Like I'm ready. I'm early. And you know, like the first time I did it, I didn't even know how to do it. I studied to make sure I knew how to jump on because I had never done it before. So like things like that, like it was just like, to me, it meant so much to me, so much to me that I wasn't going to fuck it up. I wasn't going to be late. There wasn't nothing in the world that was going to get in the way. Right. Because that's how seriously I took it. And I don't know. I just, you know, with everybody else, like anybody who's asked me to come on this shit, it's never, I've never said no. Like, yeah, hell yeah, I'll come on your shit. I'd love to, right? Because I love that, right? But the last few people, man, I've been trying to get on here. They just, they won't come on. Like, it's, and it makes me wonder, like, you know, maybe they just don't take it as seriously. I don't know. I don't know what to say. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not talking shit or anything. It's just, you know, I don't know. I, maybe I look at them differently. I don't know. I hate to even say it like that, but you, you just tend to think that in the back of your head, like, am I taking it more serious than them? And I know some people I do, like, I know that some people could care less, right? It's like, I know it's just a hobby, so it's just fun. Like, it's like, if I don't make it, I don't make it, right? But to me, it's b bigger than that. Like, I can't miss it, right? Like, even with these lives, these lives are scheduled. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I'm like the only ones I miss is when I have a family occasion and then I still do it. I still make up for it the next day. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I love you guys too. Um, but it just makes me think though, sometimes like with some of the people like that I've asked to come on live and they say, they say, yeah, but then they don't come. They don't show up. You know, or they stop answering me. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. It, it kind of makes me feel a certain way, you know. Like, what the fuck? I'm trying to. I'm trying to. And I just... You know, like, a lot of people are friends, right? They're like, There's a lot of friends out here in this community. And sometimes maybe you think they're better friends than they are maybe not i don't know you know and i'm not i would never hold anything against anybody they can't do something they can't do something whatever i don't give a shit but it does start making you feel a certain way after a few times you know uh but but i love everybody i love everybody in the community and i would never you know never turn down anybody in the community for anything i try to do everything i'm not saying i wouldn't turn people down you guys know what i mean come on don't take it there Next thing I know, I got DMs up the ass. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Um, Akira has a surprise live. Yeah, exactly, Todd. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't show up, Kara has a surprise live. Yep. Some people are just fruitcakes, man. Nothing. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And I think some people are just more busy. More busy? Is that a word? More busy. Uh, meaning, uh, like I said, they, they have their thing, their schedules already. But to me, it's like, well, then don't just don't tell me you're coming. Or 
whatever, reschedule. I don't know, like, even, like, um, you know, some people, like, I've literally tried, contacted them, set it up. And, like I said, to me, I get excited about it. So, to me, it's like, I can't miss that. But then other people make it, like, just so nonchalant. So, I guess maybe I'm the best. It's me, I think, because... I take it too seriously. I think that's the issue. I think I take it entirely too too seriously. And since I do that, it's not that big of a deal. But to me, I make it a big deal. So then maybe that's the issue. So maybe I need to stop that. So because I am the common denominator, right? Um, I can relate to this channel the best. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. Um I'm starting to fuck with Mike Hamill. I've been watching shit. He's awesome. I love Mike. Mike's a great dude. Um, do you like TS81? Yeah, the TS81 is great. It's just it's an older model, so they make a lot. So the TS81 was way ahead of its time. So it's a great knife. It still is a great knife. Um, especially the titanium frame lock model. Awesome knife. It has bone in it. It has intricate milling. Like it was way beyond its time, but they've just done so much since then. So their fit finish action, just a lot of things have gotten better over time, but that still doesn't mean that's not a great knife. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just, it was so good at the time and now it's not as good as their ones now, but it's still really good. A lot of people, that's like their favorite knife. So don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon. Thank you, Fiend. I appreciate that, bud. Thank you. And yes, the 81 is gorgeous. It's such a good looking knife. And uh, Fiend, thank you, man. I appreciate all the work you do, man. He works so hard on here. Everybody give a round of applause for Fiend and, and all the moderators, man. They bust their ass on here. Shabazz is sometimes hard to listen to. His accent voice can only take so much of that Oscar. Yeah, I think people feel the same way about me when I, in the lives because, I don't know, maybe my wording, the way I cuss, and, I don't know, my mouth. But, yeah, Mike's awesome. Mike's cool. Me and Mike have always got along. Even when other people weren't getting along with him. But I'm like that with people. Like, even, like, Jersey, man. When I first got into this stuff, Jersey Knife Guy... I was hearing him get a bunch of hate and I, well, no, let me, let me rewind. I heard him giving a bunch of hate and his mouth would just make me laugh. Like I, I could tell he was a little sharp around the edges, but I loved it. I thought he was a great dude. So like, even when he would sound like a prick, I would just give him like the kindest behavior back. And he loved it. And he's such a good dude. He really is. And you can tell by listening to him, he's got the biggest heart ever. Like you can just tell. And some people just don't, some people are easy to offend. I think that's it too. Some people are very, very easy to offend. And I'm like the hardest person to offend. Uh, man, you, Mike, I'm going to make sure bad as a metal complex for the reason I spent too much money on knives. <laughs> Stasa would be a good one to have on. I've had Stasa on actually. Stasa 23 has been on here and I would have him on here again. I would have him on here anytime. I love that guy. I love Nick. He is such a good dude. Um, he's always welcome on the channel. And not only that, he, when our channel was just coming up, I don't, I don't even think we hit 500 subs yet, he donated a box of knives to us, not cheap knives, really nice knives, some with his anno work on there, and it was just mind-blowing. Like, holy cow, this big channel, because... We only started because of channels like him. So when he donated a box of knives to us, like of that quality, it was like, it was mind blowing. I bet it does knife sergeant and a lot of other people too. And I, I know that like, I'm definitely lucky in the way that my job is during the day. Like I don't, it never interferes with lives. And uh, I, you know, I can work around it if I have to. A lot of people can't. Like Kara, she couldn't. Not not a chance in hell. Ah, the cows just bring me out. I'll talk about nothing for two hours. You think that. 
I'd have you talking about all kinds of shit. That's that's why people, some of the guys won't come on. Won't come on. They're they're scared of what I'm going to ask them. They start thinking I'm going to get into politics. They start thinking I'm going to start asking them about their records and drug addiction. And <laughs> they probably do, but I wouldn't do that to them. I would never do that to somebody. If I ever did that to anybody, they would know ahead of time that I'm going to ask them some questions like that. Jared, you do you. Don't worry about the others. They can take care of themselves. If they don't want to collaborate, no worries. There are plenty of others who want to. Facts. For sure. For sure. That, that's so true. And I, and I don't. I don't. You know, I... Obviously, I'm not even talking about, like, I'm not bringing up names or anything. I mean, you guys know people I've said were coming on and never came on. But other than that, like, there's been more than that. Um, there's been people I haven't mentioned. But I get it. You sound like my best friend from Chicago here in Texas. And people from Chicago are the sail of the earth. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. I think. I think I do. Uh, you can ask me anything. I've been through addiction and all that. I think a lot of people have. I think a lot of people have been through so much. And then I think some people are more, they keep it to their chest a little bit more, you know, they, they don't, you know, talk about it. I don't care. I wouldn't, I'm not, I would never ask somebody to give out information that they don't want you. Like even Nick Shabazz, like I would never try to ask him things that I think he considers personal that like if I had him on right I wouldn't start asking him questions that I know everybody wants to know right that everybody thinks they know but don't know like those type of questions but I would ask him some goofy shit to make it a fun live but I would never be disrespectful to anybody on the live like I totally respect somebody you know wanting to keep things personal and I also know you know that there are a lot of people in the community that have had a rough ride, right? And there's a lot of people who haven't. That's the best part about it is that we're, we can all be friends from all walks of life, right? The fact that everybody from a different walk of life can enjoy themselves and be friends. And I know at one time, like, I know most people haven't done the shit I've done and haven't been to the places I've been and a lot of shit like that. And, you know, I don't think that's cool or anything like that. And I love that I've changed my life around. Like, I don't think that's cool at all. I think that's horrible. And, um, and, but you know, I don't, uh, I know, I know a lot of people are, are different and maybe think they're, you know, so much different, but they're not, it's not at all, you know? And I think, uh, like I said, I feel very blessed to have turned my life around. 180. I almost said 360, but 180. I'm an open book, though. Not ashamed of my past. It's all growth. I'd really love to come on your live, though. I've been working on my channel for almost two months. Get a hold of me um, on Instagram. We'll talk about coming on. Uh, Maurice says, I'm a fucking drunk. <laughs> oh, hey, man. This is knife therapy man not 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 uh what is it not what is it uh aa this is kk without the, the last k just k <laughs> it's just for knives man knife therapy what, what was it called? knives anonymous i just made that sound totally fucked up knives anonymous was where i was trying to go with that that shit that sounded crazy as hell just now um but yeah i i I, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. Uh, right there. Blades and Fades. Definitely check his channel out. And give it a bell. I don't see it, guys. I don't see it, but I'll give the bell. Who donated? Kara took the damn laptop. Yeah, guys, I don't see it. Um, let me see if I can do this. Nope. Who, who donated? I can't see it, guys. I'm sorry. It's the fucking... I got to have the pad and Kara's got it. I'm sorry, guys. Everyday EDC, thank you for the donation. I appreciate the donation, man. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I can't see it. I know you donated, but um, Kara took the thing, and for some reason, it's not popping up here anymore. 
Maybe I'm doing something to prevent it. Uh, maybe the screen is a little too long. No, it ain't working. But it is getting pretty late, guys. Um, let's do uh, like two more minutes and then we'll get out of here. So if anybody has anything they want to talk about or say, we got another two, three, four minutes or something. Um, you're still in denial one minute night for you? Or Q1. Oh, you're still in denial. A lot of people are in denial. My name is Eric, and I'm addicted to Warren Cliff. See? See? You guys can take notes from Eric. See? That's how it's done. You know, that's the first step. It's the first step. And, you know, I do believe you guys will all feel better. You know, just getting it off your chest. Who here has a kookery? I think I'm probably the only one with a kookery. And I keep it in arm's length just in case if I need a, any limbs off. And it's always ready. It's always ready for action. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Think about this. Can you imagine, like, being a part of um, some sort of shit? Right? Just imagine you got some sort of shit that provokes a man to come out of his house or at you. And he's got a fucking cougar. Can you imagine that? Like, that'd be fucking crazy. It's like, like say if you broke into somebody's house. And the guy's sitting there waiting for you with one of these. And you see your reflection glimmer back at yourself. Bling. <laughs> <laughs> fucking sling you just broke i broke into sling blades house oh man that'd be so funny um knife sergeant says he has a thun r x x l what is that a thun rar a thun rar x x l that sounds badass whatever it is been flicking the oh yeah you did i forgot about that you got the 5.5 full tie. That's sweet. I did like the micarta version. I wasn't a big fan of the scrolls, which I don't know why. Because normally, I would think that would look cool. I don't know why that one just... I don't know. I bet in hand I'd love it. Um, That's when you see a gun. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, if you didn't, like, if... um, If you didn't, I'm just saying, like, the type, like... The thought that goes through your head about the guy, right? The guy, whether it's outside or inside. I'm just saying, like, somebody who breaks into a house, a gun is one thing. But a gun usually gets shot and the people run, right, because of the loud bang. You see the eyes of the guy who has one of these looking at you. And you know in that moment, like, there's something wrong with this guy. This guy's got something wrong with him. Like I fucked up. This was not the this was not the right house to break into, Bobby. <laughs> oh fuck. You always pick the bad houses to break into, Bobby. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, some Odin shit. <laughs> you fucking decided to break into a damn Spartan's house. He had a shield, Bobby. A shield. <laughs> and a damn sword. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Kaifins are good. Kaifins are sweet. Um, it's definitely a lightweight EDC knife. They're very thin, very thin behind the edge. Awesome slicers. You're not going to get good ergos out of it or nothing. It is a lightweight. Think of it as like a gent knife, kind of. It's kind of like a gent knife. I want to add a Viking shield and a LeBaron Mace to my collection or a Warhammer. But those can get pricey. I bet. I bet. I used to have a um, uh, a mace. You know, with the, the spike balls. I used to have one of those. It was pretty badass. Uh, it would be a Gurkha. They are special forces. Oh, Sid Grip. I see this one. 
Thank you, man. Sammy Davis Jr. Worship the devil. The more you know. Thank you for the donation, Sid Grip. I appreciate it, man. Have a battle axe. That's another one, man. You would not want to to cross paths with the with the log splitter, right? Or with the guy. It's kind of like even like uh, with me, like on the construction site. I always thought about it, like you know, being in bad areas and everything, and using a hammer all day and walking around with a hammer on my side, like even with a firearm. I never thought the firearm was the biggest threat to anybody. It was always the hammer in my mind, right? Because it's like I swing this thing every day, all day. Sorry, guys, my damn camera. Come on, focus, focus. There we go. Um, I swing a hammer all day, every day. It's like, do you know how much damage I can do with this thing? And not even just that, but just like the different things I can do. I can throw it up and spin it and catch it behind my back. And, you know, it's like like just tr doing trick shit with my hammer. And so it's like you start thinking about, you know, like when you swing it all day, every day, you're so used to swinging it. It's like a guy who chops wood all day with an axe or a Gurkha, you know, like... <laughs> You don't want to mess with him when he's got that weapon in his hand. Like, he's very good with that weapon. I need to get a war hammer. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I did do a, um, a little review of this one. And then I did another review of the Seems Logicals. Uh, so, I've got two... Uh, Kukri reviews up. Check it out, thanks. But um, but yeah, that shit would be hilarious. So like, <laughs> I've seen some crazy shit online though. Some of the weird things people have done or you know been a part of or seen. They're hilarious. Some of the like the crazy things that like people wind up having for whatever reason. Like, where did you get that? Like, <laughs> congratulations on the milestone. I really appreciate your wisdom, man. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for the donation. Thank you so much, man. Um, yeah, man, you guys are awesome with these donations. It does help so much, so much. I, I can't thank you guys enough because the you know, with everything, you know, obviously, you know, it, a lot of people don't like to talk about the revenue or anything like that. And, you know, I don't think you're supposed to really, but, you know, obviously the donations help in a massive, massive way. And me and Kara were talking about earlier about what I can offer with the join button. And we started talking about, um, like, because I got to do something separate from the Patreons. Like I could do the giveaway on there. And then we were talking about maybe we could do like other, like, Maybe more budget stuff giveaway for the join button or maybe like uh, behind the scenes stuff. We did have a video today that me and Kara posted of like tr doing a, a knife throwing thing. that I'll probably wind up posting to Patreon or something like that. But maybe like goofy stuff like that. I don't know. Then I thought about, man, no, maybe it should be like real knife related stuff. Like so that I can make people want to join, you know, maybe like sharpening tutorials, something like that. But. I don't know. Only fans. Yeah, I could do only fans. I, I could probably make a lot more money. <laughs> um, Hey guys, I'm out. Yeah, I'm out too. Addicted to knives, man. Thank you for coming. Everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the donations. You guys are amazing. Um, watch out for my, what are the shorts? Shorts, yeah. Watch out for my shorts and not the ones on my ass, the ones on YouTube. Um, they're only 60, second long, 60 seconds long. If you guys see them, check them out. It'll be really quick. Maybe even leave a comment or two. Um, I appreciate all you guys hanging out with me. If you guys did enjoy this, please drop a like. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Moderators, you guys are awesome, man. You guys definitely help this the lives out so much man I, I couldn't do it without you guys you guys are amazing
Peace. <laughs>